You just don't remember is what I'm trying to say here. I'm just here to teach you how to remember. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me again. Today I want to talk about health and wellness. And I want to talk about it as it pertains to stress and stressful environments. I have in front of me a couple of bullet points that I wrote down. If you see me looking at my page, or it's not that I don't know what I'm talking about. I just want to make sure that I cover everything that came to mind before I decided to go live today. And this video here is inspired by a video that I posted on my YouTube channel already. You, you got to see what you do when you when you feel for God, when you respond to a threat. Check this out. Inside the brain, you find one region that really controls the fear instinct. It's an inch long almond shaped bulb called the amygdala. When we're faced with a dangerous situation, the amygdala sounds an alarm, setting off a chain of events. A cocktail of hormones courses through the body. Pupils dilate to take in more light. The heart begins pumping blood faster. And that blood is rerouted from less essential organs to higher priority ones, like leg muscles that can kick or run. That's why when you're scared, you get butterflies. Blood flow to your stomach dramatically slows down. It's also why you get the chills with less blood in the skin to keep you warm. All of these changes are preparing you to react to the threat by either standing your ground or running for your life. So being that our blood begins to slow down in our organ and maybe in our organs, and because blood is rushing, you know, we got our chill bumps going because, you know, ain't no blood right there circulating on our skin. Being that this blood is now removed from our organs to go into this flight, fight or fight mode, I thought about stress. I thought about when there's not a dog right there, when there's not a gun or a knife that we see in our physical reality. What about when we just bombarded with a stressful job that we had going to, but we got to be there and we got to be on time. But meanwhile, our baby at home sick or what about we in a chaotic relationship? That, that brings us in this, this survival mode too, like, right? And so we, that helps you better understand how they say stress is a silent killer because we can be function, fully functioning in a flight or fight stressful mode. <laughs> and we, we so used to living our life like that when we forgot. That we ain't never turned that, that those hormones that's being released, we never turned that part of ourselves off. We never sat down and took deep breaths. We we don't have time to be meditating. We so stressed, but we don't have time to eat. And it, and it all makes so much perfect sense to me. Because like in corporate America, when when I, I come from corporate America, 22 years. And so when I had like um, maybe vendors to vendor meetings and maybe safety presentations going on and maybe... Um, uh, transmission technical drawings that needed review and approval, things like that. Public affair meetings and things like that. I, I didn't have the best diet. I, I didn't even matter of fact. I didn't even think about drinking water. It's like water. I, girl, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do this here for the team. I gotta go here. I gotta do. This. And so then, then after that particular meeting or whatever it was was over with, and I realized that man, I was tired. I'm so glad that's over. And it's almost like, so when that's over, then maybe the blood begins to circulate again in those organs. But what about the people who is never, ever over with? <laughs> what about the people that stay in that mode? What about the VPs that, you know, because when I was in corporate America, I would look at the VPs in corporate America and all of them had them little them black, deep, like death looking bags underneath their eye. And I, and I, I used to want to climb the corporate America ladder. And I said one day when I saw one too many of them with them black circles around our eyes, because I'm very inquisitive and observing and I read energy and stuff. I said, baby, I used to want to climb that corporate America ladder, but there's something about being up top on that ladder that I do not want to experience. <laughs> I won't go up there because um, they might make the money. But why they all look like something wrong with their kidneys? 
because you know when you really have them dark, baggy, um, sagging looking eyes that, that your face will tell you a lot of, about your health until so when it's deep, almost death looking, that's them kidneys. <laughs> that's them adrenal glands, like, right? And so stressful um, situations put us in uh, those fight or flight moments, but on top of that, so let's say you in this stressful environment, right? <laughs> I see you laughing laptop. You in this stressful environment, and then you decide to just grab something because I'm stressed out. I don't have time. I don't have time to be eating no healthy meals. I don't have time to give myself minerals and electrolytes and stuff. So I'm going to just grab something. I'm going to grab this burger. I'm going to grab these fries. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab I'm gonna grab this pork chop. So you, let's say you grab something that came from the animal kingdom. like right. So now let's, let's energetically break that thing down. And I ain't encouraging you to go vegan and all. I'm not saying that. I just want you to understand energetically what you just did. So you already had some adrenaline going on in your body. You already had the fight or fight mode that you already released. The hormones or the chemicals already released inside of you. So let's say you decide you're going to get you a pork chop sandwich. So now you've transferred that adrenaline from that animal because the animal had to be in fight or fight mode too. Okay, he, he or she had to be scared knowing that it was living at the slaughterhouse. And so now, now you transfer that energy inside of you because energetically now, energy is neither created nor destroyed. It simply transforms so that that animal was running away when it got its throat slit. If that animal was stressed out, it has some adrenaline going through it too. So now you can digest that on top of your already stressful environment that you already in flight or fight mode on. This is why them people in corporate America is really, they really have a lot of health issues. I used to, in when I was in corporate America, I used to sign up for the In Shape initiatives because my passion was always about health and wellness. And so not only were they overworked and stressed, but if you told those type of people, because they already in flight or fight mode, something different from what they were doing, they got really, really defensive about it. But I feel like these type of people, these stressful people are the ones that really need this most because the adrenal gland is sitting right above your, your kidneys. And so being that no blood is being is flowing in your in them other organs, now you got pressure in your back. Now your kidney is not functioning properly properly. Now you have heart issues, right? Because you in fight or flight mode, and so all of your strength <laughs> is in your arms, in your extremities, in your legs. And so, so those are the type of people that's walking around with my VP, he, one of my VPs, he, he had uh, high blood pressure, but he was always stressed out. But every time I saw him, every time I saw him, he had Starbucks in his hand. And I told him one day, I was like, dude, do you drink coffee every day? He was like, yeah, yeah, I got a lot going on, got a lot going on. And I'm like, listen, dude, I understand you stressed. I get it. But the havoc of the stress that you already under, plus the coffee that's putting more strain on top of your kidneys, man, it's giving you a rush. It's picking you up, but then it's letting you down. It's dehydrating you. If you're already in a stressful environment, you already don't have blood flow. So he not only had stress, but he had high blood pressure. Walking around with the, he, he was one of the ones with the, with the black sparkles underneath his eyes, but not understanding why. And today's video is to understand why I'm in a point in my life right now where I'm retired. I did early retirement and I got my own little business going on. And I, and I, it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, business fluctuates or sometimes when, when, when it's slower and I'm able to do my business, maybe about two or three o'clock, I get it. I could honestly say I get a little bored. And so when getting a little bored, I'd be like, well, maybe I could do something else with this little time. And every time I think about doing something else with that other little time, I'm like, wait, wait, hold up. I think this is a little bit of some trauma for the two years of working in corporate America, thinking that I always got to do, 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 because I'm no longer in fight or fight mode that I, I sometimes wonder, okay, am, am I being lazy? 
You know, I started working when I was 16 years old. Should I get another job? And that, and that's another thing. So being out of that mode makes you feel like you're doing nothing. This is why a lot of the retirees, they go back to work. They turn up being a little Walmart greeter because they needed something to keep them going. But basically what they're saying is, I spent all of my life in fight or flight mode. And now I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And so every time I get this bright idea to do something else, is it pertains to getting another so-called little job, a little gig, a little time pass? I'd be like, no, I, I, I don't, I don't, nah, I changed my mind. I don't think I want to go back up in there. I don't think my body, just physically my body, the stress that comes with that thing, I don't really care about that no more in my journey. Because now I know the difference of the two. The difference of how my body felt then and how my body feels now. <laughs> it's a difference. So let's get down to the physical. So I wanted to understand, the, you don't understand the grand scheme of things. But what you physically can do if you're still in that particular environment to help with your adrenal glands, to help with that high blood pressure, to help with that cholesterol issues. First of all, foremost, what you have to let go of is that coffee. That morning coffee. Everybody in corporate America be running up in that break room. Those people just shaking. You could see them shaking them. They're wasting the coffee because their adrenal glands is suffering because they already stressed out. Don't get hooked on that coffee if you're in corporate America. Don't get hooked on that coffee if you're just, just a regular old person and grandma drunk coffee and my auntie drunk coffee and it's cold today, so let me go drink some coffee. Don't be like them. Don't be like them, though. The blind can't lead the blind. At least we all fall up into a ditch. That's blind behavior, running behind coffee. That's ascetic. That's going to mess up your adrenal gland. That's one thing you need to, we need to stay away from. Another thing would be those uh, blockers, you know, those steroids. You know, when we have some, some people, when they have these, like, so-called autoimmune diseases or whatever, they'll put them on these steroids to stop them from... Um, whatever the sickness or disease is to stop it from triggering kind of like to to block it kind of like you know uh, <laughs> to, to to hide it when they have like skin issues or whatever so they take the steroid and it hides it so come on let's go back to energy one more time we need to stay off the steroids and we need to stop hiding stuff we need to let that stuff come out that's the natural process even if you're in spirituality you got to bring out those clouds it's, i mean those skeletons in the closet you have to meet yourself you have to sit with yourself let that trauma out in order for you to be healed it got to come out so in the physical it's no different you got to let that sickness or disease out in order for you to be healed you take a pill unless you decide that i'm signing up this for this pill all of my physical life understand that that pill ain't gonna help you if it's just blocking because what happens when you block energy what happens energetically when you block energy it gets greater and greater what happens to those people who sit up there and try to try to say i am beautiful i am worthy i am a, a multi-millionaire and they don't believe it what happens it comes greater and greater and greater and greater because they don't believe it they try to block the fact that they don't believe it and it grew ain't no different from when you taking steroids you just letting something else just grow inside of you while out inside of you and then now so you decide oh i'm tired of being on these steroids because now i didn't gain so much weight because i was blocking stuff i didn't gain so much weight blocking this thing i gotta get off these steroids i gotta get off these drugs because i was blocking stuff don't get into blocking heal let's heal at a cellular level let's start detoxing at a cellular level i love coffee and <laughs> keisha okay Okay, Keisha, with your coffee. <laughs> if you love it, have a relationship with it. Now, this is mindfulness here. For those of you who ain't there yet, don't listen to this here part. If you love it and have a relationship with it, Keisha, and if your mental is there where you, you can mentally trump this by saying you have a good relationship with coffee and your coffee giving you the magnesium that you, it needs for your body. Your coffee is not allowing any type of adrenal fatigue on your body. And if that be true, you will not have your highs and your lows with your coffee. Your highs and your coffee will not make you ascetic. That's if you believe it. But if you don't have the mindset right now where you believe that and you understand that coffee is ascetic in this matrix, then I would suggest you hydrate your body eat more than 
with water and with fruits more than you hydrate your body with coffee because it will show your physical reality that you do not believe. But that's that's up to you. <laughs> that's up to you. Yeah, I do ginger shots. Ginger is perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going for acupuncture next week to make sure nothing is blocked. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a beautiful process. Beautiful process. Yeah, it's a generation program in our DNA. It really is. Yes, when I removed, when I moved to Africa, felt freedom for the first time, felt guilty not being active. Oh, yeah, so you understand it. You understand it. Yeah, definitely. But that that's just programming. We, 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 because especially with black people, it's a black person's perception upon they self based upon what they read and what they've heard. You know, black people in slavery type times being lazy, being called lazy, not working hard enough by the so-called massa, you know, reading that, digesting that and believing that. And then when you get in the place where you're working your butt off, you feel like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then even in, in corporate America, you know, cause we were for, you know, the darker hued beans were for and in between in certain groups. And so they would get together and they'd be like, yeah, cause you know, we gotta work harder, you know, cause we gotta do this here. We gotta show our face even harder. We can't, we can't have, leave our, um, um, T's not crossing, our eyes undotted and stuff. We'll say these things and we'll begin to believe these things. No, baby, you, you know, no, you ain't got to work no hard. You ain't got to work no hard. You work smart. You work with your mind and draw things to you. <laughs> we, we got that slave mentality as a belief in our mind. And what is a belief? Something that we've told ourselves over and over and over until it became a law in our subconscious mind and that subconscious mind if you know anything about energy is the very thing that is running your life it is the very thing that is running your physical reality yeah i don't believe anything i got into the knowing i know that's where you go i am no i oh, i love you and use the name you gotta like they say in church you gotta know that you know that you know that you know <laughs> and that's it that's it and then, so nothing shall no, by no means harm you when you get to that knowing state of being. But far and in between, we have people who think they know, people that know, you know, and people that's far from the knowing. But but it's always God. Everybody just in a different place, a different mindset. Like, right? You're welcome. Hey, sweet. Thank you for being here. So, so what's happening to your organs and your body when, when blood ain't flowing at it? So this is this is this leads to the next part of this here video. This is why these people have this so-called high blood pressure, cause they in flight or fight mode, and that pressure, that blood, has become stagnated. Because in that previous video that I'm I'm speaking of, if you watched it, it will show you how the 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 hormones and the blood flow, the hormones being released, and immediately the blood flow subsides up in here, but it runs. All through up in here, all the way to the feet and stuff. And so, these people that have blood, high blood pressure be dealing with this here type of mental, physical fatigue. <laughs> these people with this cholesterol issue, these kidney issues, these people are stressed the heck out. That's what it really is getting down. All is mine. It ain't just because these people ain't a darn animal that already had um, adrenaline inside of it, that already had toxic energy and parasites. That's a whole nother video. It's about the mindset of where these people are. It's about the environment. Man, I tell you, when you move and change your environment, even my move out here, my move out here from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I love New Orleans, I promise you. I will always call New Orleans home. But the people that I was surrounded with, the people in my neighborhood that I lived in for 22 years, the people that was on, my, some, some of the people that was on my job, the pe people who I used to party and hang with, it's like a lot of them stayed in their limited way of thinking. They always wanted to rinse and repeat. And I was always the one like, I don't even care about money for no more. I don't think I wanna. I don't think I wanna go by so and so house this year no more. Oh, I, I don't think I wanna do that on New Year's no more. But we would be rinsing and repeat, repeating, and they were in the same mindset. And I was a little introvert. I was a little inquisitive one. I was the one that dared to do something different. I was the standoffish one, and everybody wondered why it just didn't feel good to me no more. And then when I changed my environment here. 
And it's something about being here in this in this new state, this new environment where it feels like the frequency, the energy is so different. And people have different mindsets. And I know that I'm about around abundance and not mindset. And I know that I'm around family and ordinary people. And I know that I'm around people that's not in survival mode. And that is really important. Like the people, when I came out here, I made a mistake one day and I went to the store and, and nobody else was home when I had left. So I was the last person to leave out the house. I made a mistake and I left the garage open. And... I left the garage open and I was gone for about two hours or so. And I came back and when I pulled on the street, I was like, oh my God, did somebody home? Did somebody come home? And then they left the garage open? Did I do that? And when I realized that I did that and it was open, which the door to the garage was open too. And I just looked around and I'm like, what is it? Everything here. Because my in my mind, I'm thinking about that other environment. If I would have did that over there, then I probably wouldn't even have anything in the house. But doing it here and everything was still here. And I'll be like, I was like, I'll be done. My environment changed. And then so now when I leave out, sometimes my neighbors, some, uh, maybe about four or five people, just always have their garage open. And I don't be seeing no cars or nothing. And I'll be like, well, what? How you just leave the garage open all day long like that? And, and stuff still in there. And in the, on the corner house, <laughs> the corner house, they have these, these Amazon packets. In front of their door and their house is like on oh, their door is like right on the corner. I mean the door be covered with Amazon packages. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, they're still there. The packages. Oh, my environment changed. We're not in fight or fight mode. Nobody's stealing their stuff like they would in that other state that I was in. Because I looked at them, I was like, oh my God. I looked at their house rather than I was like, oh my God, they need to hurry up and come home if they want their things. <laughs> But I tell you, when you change your environment and the people and the signal that's in that other environment, you get out of the stressful mode too. And you begin to relax and you begin to pick up on a new signal and you begin to, to release that adrenaline fatigue that's sitting on top of your kidneys. Yeah, that cortisol level that's really high rocketed when you're stressed out, it begins to release. Hey, you love first. This is so true, a relaxing environment. Shawana, no. Yeah, and so the environment, and so and so now in this environment, we didn't even, I used to try to get hummingbirds in Louisiana, the hummingbirds didn't even come out there. I guess the hummingbirds knew about the environment too. Cause now I, I put out the little um, hummingbird feeders and I could go out there and the whole flock of them will come. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It's such a bird chirping, peaceful environment. But them hummingbirds wasn't coming out there in no Louisiana. Oh, give darn how many of the little bird feeders there was a comment. Environment really, really matters. Your stressful environment matters. This is straight up physical. Straight up physical. Environment can definitely be a powerful thing. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. If not, it is a very powerful thing. Because even like when I go out to, to hiking in Sedona, and there's nature and there's the little rabbits just running around and they're so pretty, even the little coyotes. But even, they got these little black things and I don't know the name of these things because I stay away from them because they, they, they look scary only because I never saw it before. But they, there's something out here, maybe one of y'all know, it's something out here that look like a pig, but it's a black pig and they run in packs. But they don't do nothing though, even though I, I'm kind of nervous about seeing them because they only come out at night and I heard that they can't see well, whatever they are, but they come out at night and they be like four or five. They, they travel in packs with the, you know, the mom and the dad and the babies and stuff. They be out in the mountains, but even with them, even with the coyotes and all of the animals and all of the things that they have out here, none of those things are chaotic. It's the craziest thing. Like I saw these things in the mouth in Sedona and I looked at them. I was like, what the heck is that? Cause I, a black pig, that's what it really looked like. A black, black, I'm talking about black and purple black pig <laughs> at night. And you know, I, me and my family and friends that were out there like, oh my God, what is that thing? The things was just walking with a family like, and they saw or heard us and they all, the whole pack just turned around and looked at us so peacefully. And then they all just turned their head and they just kept on walking. 
even the animals, no matter how chaotic they look, they're so peaceful in this environment. They're not messing with nobody. They're not messing with nobody. Now, you might get a little nervous because you ain't never seen that thing before, but they ain't even messing with you because environment matters because even those animals, they're not running away. They're not trying to kill because they're not in flight or fight mode. They're not stressed the heck out like most people and most other animals naturally are when they know that they're getting slaughtered. Because people can act chaotic and in flight or fight mode also when they feel like they are working and getting slaughtered. When you think Becky back there is, is a racist and she about to send you to the chamber, you gonna be in flight or fight mode too. <laughs> it's just a natural thing that's gonna happen. It's just a natural thing. Got knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a natural thing that happened. Hey, go goddess. We attract according to energy. Yes, we do. Yes, in my neighborhood, they leave the front door open. Yeah, loyal. I mean, royal. And so it, it's like, dang, environment does matter. And if any of you are really into spirituality and you watch these spiritual um, coaches or whatever, Dr. Uh, Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time. And a lot of times these spiritual leaders and gurus or whatever will tell you to come out, come out to this particular retreat. Get on this here particular cruise. Even Abraham Hicks, if you pay attention, because I pay attention to the small details like this here. They move them people out of their environment in an effort to increase their brain capacity, to increase their frequency, to give them some type of newness, something else to look forward to. Because if you can't stand your job and you can't stand your neighbors, this is why probably why a lot of us go on vacations and stuff just to get away for a little bit. You can't stand that environment. <laughs> Oftentimes, it is so much easier to move from that environment to a more peaceful one to get you into the momentum of practicing that new thought, that new healing, that new mindset, that new prosperity, whatever it is, environment matters to some of us. Some of us can't sit there and, 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 just, and just meditate in that right now environment as if we're quantum jumping in. Some of us need to get in the car. Some of us need to get on the bicycle. Some of us need to get on that plane to get out of that environment because it alone, constantly looking at it, alone it is causing stress it is causing flight or fight mode it is causing adrenaline fatigue yes so i told you what we could do to get away from it sometimes that, that could mean getting off of that particular job sometimes sometimes that could mean leaving that man or that woman sometimes sometimes it could mean selling all that you have and moving to another state sometimes sometimes people do those things because they understand something they understand that environment matters. They understand that like, even, even a drug addict know <laughs> that is if it goes back, an ex-drug addict rather, it knows if it goes back into that old environment around them old friends, that old mindset that they're gonna get back on drugs again. So so when they trying to they trying to clear their body and they trying to start a, a new leaf on new leaf on life, they like. I ain't going back over there. I got to avoid so and so because my environment matters. Yes, it does. It does. I spoke that. Yes, it does help with stress. That's something that I don't even have on my table today. So let's talk about the things that could help us with stress. First of all, for the tools, and I talked about um, some of these already, but there's going to be some that are, that are new that I'm going to be introducing today. First of all, for those that have like high blood pressure type issue, when you have pressure, you have a buildup, when you have whether it is a stress buildup or a mucus buildup, you need things that's going to loosen the mucus. You need things that's going to relax the body and, and send the minerals, these um, maybe saline type minerals, like soothe minerals type, right? I mean, soothe the organs, like, right? And that's going to be akin to your healthy salts. I did a recent video about uh, pink Himalaya sea salt. I also did a video about this new salt that I have called Celtic sea salt. It's a gray salt. Your salt should have color. There's also a third salt that I want to mention on this here video called Lava. is is a darker black salt. So we got pink Himalaya sea salt. We got 
Celtic sea salt, and this is the one. This is the one I was talking about, the Celtic salt, the gray one. And then we have I don't have my pink one in my, or my black one right here in front of me, but and then we also have the black lava salt. And the reason why I'm mentioning these here salts, whether you incorporate them in your water, which I did a video on my God is just be healthy page about this, incorporating the salts in your water helps to alkaline your water for one, helps to deliver electrolytes to your body for another thing, and over 80 plus minerals to your body as well. Salt is necessary if you have cholesterol issues, if you have high blood pressure issues, if you have sinus issue. Why am I telling you about this here salt, these salts? Because salt has the ability to not only alkalize the body and do all those different things, but if you think about how we use salt and we'll just put it like outside on little bugs, little um, snails and things like that, and how it draws it up, how it, it how it, it will draw up that little snail and, and destroy that cell. Why is that? Well, it is because the salt has the ability to shrink mucus. It shrinks up that toxicity. It shrinks up whatever is clogging you in that particular area and destroys it and it helps to soften it and expel it out of your body. So that's why salt is really important. White salt is toxic. I would say stay away from white salt at all costs. And that means staying away from it with inserting potato chips. If they don't say sea salt, that means it's white salt. That means on your french fries at McDonald's or Burger King and any other place out there, you're getting white salt. That means when you go into a restaurant to eat and treat your family on the table, they have in that white salt and they're cooking with that white salt. So I'm letting you know you're getting your white salt. Unless you're a person like me and I really don't care. My family laugh at me and, and judge me for it, but guess what? I don't care. Unless you're a person like me that bring individual packs of pink Himalaya sea salt with you when you go out to eat. <laughs> and you be ready. Well, that's what I do. Anyway. I'm saying that because in your home, even if you can't catch it everywhere out there, make sure in your home you have colored salt. Make sure you have for your family a salt that has a hue to it to help you with that excess mucus in your body. That mucus that needs to be expelled out of your body. How is it going to get expelled? Through those kidneys. The same thing that is really going to wreak havoc if you stress out. If you have this adrenaline fatigue, if you in flight or fight mode, your kidneys are actually suffering. So them kidneys really, really need that salt. They really need that salt because it is alkaline and the kidneys is dealing with all your acids and all of your mucus. And the kidney needs the proper salt that has color in it in order to help you to break this stuff down. Yes, ma'am. I saw they use it only pink Himalaya sea salt at home. Yeah, definitely. That is so good. And sea salt only. Yes, this is beautiful. Yeah. So, we need to make that a rule. And we teach in our family at the same time. You know, so this so-called generational uh, curse of ignorance, of diet, won't go on. Because I tell my family all the time, you know, my boys, I tell them all the time, look, I ain't raising no ducks. If you're going to be quacking, you're going to quack because you chose to quack, not because I didn't tell you no better. Now, this here is to do better because I broke the mold of the generational curses. We ain't going to just rinse and repeat, and, and, and repeat on stupidity. It don't work like that over here. So, now that you know that about salt, I also did a video on your drinking water. It don't matter what kind of water that you're getting. I mean, what brand of water that you're getting. All that really matters is that it's spring water. Why is that? Because spring water is supposed to have sodium bicarbonate in, in it. Your body naturally secretes this in your pancreas, right? Not only that, in your stomach, you have sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda, on the lining of it so that the acids inside of your stomach wouldn't be burning through your body. That's the thing, the lining of the stomach that has sodium bicarbonate and it buffers that stuff that's in the inside of your stomach. So sodium bicarbonate and electrolytes are in your spring water. So electrolytes, what are they talking about when they're talking about electrolytes? They're talking about salt, <laughs> the proper salt that are able to secrete uh, hydrochloric acid inside of your stomach to keep the acids in your stomach plentiful enough to break down your food. So you get that also from your spring water. 
But those spring waters, they, they ain't all that good. And I ain't about to bring you out there and tell you to go get no no high expensive one. Because it's going to be better. Because honestly, I believe in the manipulated energy. I believe that we have to manipulate the energy of all things. Because we are God and we're creators. That's just what we do. We manipulate energy. And so I would say get whatever brand of spring, not reverse osmosis, not distilled, of spring water. Bring it home and manipulate your energy of your water. I did a video on this here on God is Just Be Healthy page already where you put in my bread meal, baking soda, pure baking soda. I didn't say almond hammer, pure baking soda, a pinch of this here, and pure salt with a color, a pinch of that there, in your regular, no matter what bottle it is, for, as long as it's spring water, in your bottled water it don't matter what brand it is is what i'm saying just as long as it's spring water so you get a little pinch of your sodium bicarbonate you get a little pinch of your pink himalaya sea salt and now those of you with that high cholesterol that that high blood pressure with that adrenaline fatigue on your on your um, adrenal glands now it's like a saline solution that's going down inside of you sinus issues all of that is tackling that there we discussed this here already and so now your water is softer for those who don't like to drink water now your water is alkaline because guess what your sodium bicarbonate has increased the alkalinity of it and your salt increased the alkalinity of it too your sodium bicarbonate is the antifungal so now it's, it's, it's cleaning up your gut while it's being digested right now if you had leaky gut now your sodium bicarbonates help you with your leaky gut because leaky gut is pretty much a hole in the gut and the gut got a hole in it because it didn't have the sodium bicarbonates around the barrier of the gut in order to not get a hole in it right then you got your electrolytes from your pink himalaya sea salt or your uh, gray salt or your black lava salt you got your electrolytes and you got 80 plus minerals in your body you got like a saline solution in your body to help you with your health issues you also have magnesium. Magnesium is needed in every organ in your body. Magnesium is needed in every organ in your body. Y'all hear me when I say that magnesium is needed in every organ in your body? And you're getting magnesium from these darker colored salts. If you're just using white salt, you're getting salt that has been stripped of all of its minerals, leaving you with sodium. Girl, that's two. Oh, so you get two minerals or whatever you need from the white salt. This is why it causes you high blood pressure. Oh, because you needed more minerals. Oh, because you are an electric being, so you need electric foods and you need more than two. Oh, you made up over like 104 of them. Oh, and you were only getting two for years. And then you were in fight or fight mode and you were giving yourself two little things. Oh. And all, and being that you was in flight or fight mode, all of, all of your organs, all of the blood in those organs was just really not plentiful at all because your blood was moving to your arm so you could kick ass while you was in fight or flight mode. That's why you had wanted to kick Becky ass because she had back, uh, backstabbed you in corporate America. Oh, that's why you always wishing somebody would. Oh, because you were fight or fight mode and you're stressed the heck out and your blood is not even flowing properly to your organs and because on top of that you're eating a toxic diet with the stressful release of adrenaline from the animals too so they were stressed now you're stressed you didn't eat their stress and now everybody everything's stressed and now your health is struggling and and so you was you just grabbed any kind of water because you felt like water was water so you was drinking reverse oh my god you went to the store and you just grabbed the cheap little water and it was the reverse osmosis water. And what does that water do? It reverses. It takes everything. So the little, little tiny mineral, the little tiny magne magnesium that you had when you drunk the reverse, the hunger water that was looking for minerals because it's reverse. When you drunk that, it took your magnesium, your little, your little bitty, 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 bitty magnesium that you did have. It took it. Because you was drinking the wrong type of water without the minerals, without the electrolytes, yeah, without the sodium bicarbonates. I'm teaching y'all something here today, and I'm teaching it to you in, the, in a way that you could understand it and apply it to your life. So now we done talked about the water. We done talked about the sodium bicarbonates. We talked about what happens to the body when you're in flight or flight mode. And I don't mean just because you just saw a dog or an animal that you scared of. That means when you're in a toxic environment on your job, when you're in that no good relationship, they ain't going nowhere. But you think you see a little tiny microscopic amount of potential 
or you think, oh, but the ass is good, or however you say that damn there, and you stay there, and you're in fight or flight mode because that person ain't giving you the so-called 50-50. <laughs> or maybe your environment, maybe you live in a type of environment that if you do leave your garage open, you know that your house, everything in your house going to be gone. So maybe you always got to watch your back. Maybe you in corporate America where you feel like you got to watch your back too. You know, all of these different things, distress too, distress. This is messing with your organs and stuff, right? I heard you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. All right. I want to make sure that I'm caught up on any comments before we go to the next part. Cause I want to share you share with you some herbs too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Dolores Cannon. Oh yeah, yeah, her too. I heard of her. She's the lady. She's an older lady. I think she passed though. She's an older lady. Yeah, she used to have retreats. Yeah, she was talking about the new earth and stuff. Yeah, I remember. I I saw a video on her. Let's see. Fasting and meditation will quantum jump your reality. Facts. Facts. But for those that are, are not there. Sometimes we need some things in the physical reality, you know, because the matrix has a coding for things where the frequency of some of the things that we could consume can get us in a um, energetically or mentally better state of being because of their frequency. And sometimes when we are low frequency, we got to go to the herbs. We got to go to nature to increase our frequency because now we're transforming the energy from it into us. And so a lot of people mental don't be there. Like especially if you if you think about it, if we're in flight or fight mode, animals ain't thinking logically, you know, when they're ready to bite or attack, so to speak. And we become animalistic in our behavior when we're in fight or flight mode. And so we're not thinking logically. We don't have that attention span, especially when we become sleep deprived, you know. It's like we, we just wish somebody would, you know, that adrenaline just to get pumping, just get pumping and you just like... Your nerves get really, really bad. You get really, really chaotic. So that'll be the, that is, that'll be like really out of reach for some people. You see what I'm saying? For them to try to meditate. Like if, if you think about it, you know, somebody with, with a gun in their hand. Okay, breathe deep. And you're trying to bring them down, but you, you want to bring them down from killing that other person and tell them to sit Indian style and we're going to meditate. That, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of a lot a lot of down we gotta go from them wanting to blow somebody's brains up i mean out or whatever however you do that thing <laughs> let's see but yeah but it does work for a person that is ready you know for a stable type of mindset astral travel as well yeah i put a couple of drops of become spirit um turpentine in my spiritual bag look at y'all y'all advance over here that experience shows you that all is an illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like you. I use drinking water. So how do we use it? Just sprinkle a bit in the water every day. Yeah, every day. If you check out my, my page on God is Just Be Healthy, every day. What I do is I, when I buy the case of this different brand or whatever other brand, as long as it's spring, like I said, I just open up every bottle that's in the, um, you know, in that case. Open up every bottle. And I take a pinch of the pink Himalayan sea salt and I'm putting like this here amount. One, two, three. However you want to measure that. Look, I ain't one, two, three. I'm micro dosing it. Pinch. One, two, three. That's all I do with my pink Himalayan sea salt and with my sodium bicarbonates. And I put them in oil and bottles. I put them topped on the oil and bottles and I put them bottles in the refrigerator or wherever I'm going to store them at. And now I know that all of my family members, and they already know that the bottle's open, all of my family um, members are going to be drinking alkaline spring water with sodium bicarbonate. They're going to have an antifungal. They, they're going to have electrolytes. This is going to be good, pure water for them. I'm not spending all my money on no Evian in no Fuji water, thinking and hoping that they got the right kind of bicarbonate, thinking and hoping that it came from a natural spring and all of that crazy stuff there. Just nip that in the bud and it works. It gives them energy, give us all energy. It helps us be, be regular. It, it, it works. It's a drastic difference. The first day, I'll bring you back to the first day that I started doing this. And my boys both told me, mom, this water is so much better. It's so much smoother. What are you doing to the water? It's giving us energy. 
I like to drink the water like this. Tell me what you're doing so that when you're not around, I can do it for myself. And they already know that I manipulate energy and everything that I put my hand on up in here when I'm cooking food for them and stuff anyway already. So it don't bother them that the bottle is open. And if anybody outside of my family come to my house and they want water, I'll give them one that I ain't never, a case that I never touched yet. So it's still sealed. Or if I touched all of them, I just tell them, look, I, I put some sea salt in this water and some sodium bicarbonate. Now, if you really thirsty, you drink it. My hands was clean. If you don't want it, then you're just going to be thirsty. Because <laughs> this is my, my water at my house, and this is what I do with my water. Okay? <laughs> How much sodium you put in it? Now, just a pinch. A pinch of each. So I'm doing like this. One, two, three of the salt. And one, two, three of the pure form of baking soda. I did not say baking, baking soda by no arm and hammer. Don't put no arm and hammer up in your mouth. Don't put arm and hammer in your mouth. Arm and hammer is not the purest form of baking soda. I'm talking about sodium bicarbonates by Bob's Red Meal, and they have other organic kinds, but this is uh, one kind that's available on Amazon. That's really, um, it's a small um, bag and it's that I found on Amazon because I really have tubs of um, organic baking soda, but that's a small package that I had readily available for this year video. Okay, so that we caught up on that because I want to move on to other things. Let's see. You put it in the water. Just get in here. Yeah, I put it in the water bottles. One, two, three of King Kimberley sea salt. Uh, or lava um salt. Salt with color. No white salt. I'm not talking about white salt. Don't put white salt in your water. You get spring water. You don't get reverse osmosis and you won't don't get distilled just since you're just getting here. Don't get those kind of waters. Find you a bottle of water that says spring in the stove. So you're going to turn the bottle of water around. You're going to look at the ingredients and it's going to say spring water. It shouldn't say nothing else. Spring water because that's what you, the case of water that you're going for. And then when you get them home, you open up your bottle of waters and you put your sodium bicarbonates inside of your own water and you put your pink Himalayan sea salt or your other colored salt, whichever one you like, but make sure it's a color because you're looking for the mineral. You put that in there, put your caps back on there. Now your whole family is drinking alkaline pure water that you just manipulated the energy of and that you know is pure and it tastes amazing. It tastes so smooth. It is so refreshing, so reviving because you are an electric being and you need electrolyte. We are constantly drinking dead water. So going back to the person that likes the, sugar, um, the um, coffee that dehydrates you, you are a prime example of a person that needs this type of water. You need to manipulate your water because now you got to do more to get back hydrated again. Because coffee, first thing in the morning, is acetic. You got mucus in the coffee from the, from the um, creamer, you know, your milk. Then you got more acids in your coffee by it being acetic and you adding white toxic sugar so now you're addictive to the sh the coffee because sugar is like being on crack so you pretty much if we just break it down and just call it i'm not trying to be ugly call it what it is so now you it's aching to you being on crack that's why you love love it because like a crackhead loves their crack you can't tell the crackhead when they're on crack you need to get off of crack because they ain't even hear you matter of fact i know some crackheads from my past and there was one, <laughs> let me tell you this story. There was one on my journey when I was doing, when I first began actually, and I was into them get, getting expensive orders and going to whole food markets and trying all the orders out and doing the water reports. I saw a crackhead and I hadn't seen him in a while. And I was sad that he was skinny and looking cracky and he was still out there drinking his little life away. And I was like, hey, you want some water? I'm going to give you some water. And I went and got my expensive order and I bought it to him. And he looked at me and I'm telling him all the good things about the water. And that man looked at me and he said, girl, what the hell wrong with you? You trying to kill me. And I'm like, but why? He didn't want my water <laughs> because he was on his crack. You can't tell people when they own their crack to get off their crack. They, when they own their sugar, you can't leave them people where they at in your journey.
because they ain't hearing you in no way. Don't waste your water on those people. And this is akin to the biblical text when it say, don't cast your pearls amongst the swine. If nobody, if the people who really need this ain't in this life, then let them people go ahead on and stay on their crack because it's not their season. You see what I'm saying? It's just not their season. So you just can't tell them some them, some of them people like this that was in that morning break room about that morning coffee, even though they sit up there shaking like, "Hi, how are you? How was your weekend?" You know, like they shaking, but you can't tell them that they cup shaking. Like what? What were you talking about me? I don't see you shaking. What's wrong with you? Because they are addicted to they crack. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. I drink mine without sugar. Oh, that's beautiful. How much I put for a gallon of water that you would drink throughout the day? So this is um, this is what six ounce. So it's like about four of these will be like. It can to like a gallon. So, so I would be sitting up there about, I don't know, I'm going to do it with 12. I mean, with, um, with, in a gallon thing, but yeah, about a little 12 little, 12 little pinches like this here. Doing this here like 12 times. It's aching to the measurement of, of a gallon. So just do that. Instead of doing it three times, like I said, you did, you did three little pinches like here in this 16 ounce, do it 12 times. And a whole gallon of whatever and so if you're making a gallon of or if you have a gallon picture of water i see what you're saying or making a gallon of a, a drink or something and you want it in your drink because i even add it when i'm making um like lime aids or something i'll add just a small amount in my um in my uh lime aid so my my drinks already my drinks already have it in this here bottle. So this is the bottle that I will be pouring in the gallon bottle already. So it's pretty much equivalent to 12 little pinches, whatever, because you're doing it three times four. That's 12. So the next thing I want to talk about is some herbs. Hey, Earth Angel, you are so welcome. Here's some herbs. I put what? Oh, yeah, I answered that one already. So the next thing I want to talk about is some herbs. Some herbs, because you all know I'm still on my fast. I don't even know what the date is, but my fast ain't over. Wait until the 29th. What's today's date, y'all? I don't work and I don't be looking. I ain't look at a computer or nothing. <laughs> is the date up there on my phone? No. What is today's date? Somebody tell me the number of the date today. So on the 29th, my um, fast is over. And I think that's going to be Sunday. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's the 25th. Okay, thank you, Raz. Thank you, thank you. Today's the 25th. So I got four more days on my fast, like, right? And so during my 90 day fast, I have been trying all kinds of herbs for different areas. And keep in mind, I make herbs. I make the bitter herbs, detoxing bitters. I make a weight loss um, herbal blend. And they're not bitter they're like the sarsaparilla type um i'm not sarsaparilla the sarasap and nettle type herbs that are purge your kidneys and stuff but they're easy to go down you know they don't make you gag like the bitters the bitters are coming from my sustained detox so i make all different types of herbs but keep, keep in mind certain herbs will help you in certain areas more than you know just your average one so i'm saying that for example if you are like a soursop kind of person and you know soursop is the main one that everybody like i have soursop in my b to t and everybody like oh yeah soursop is good for you know cancer it'll help you know cure the big c word you know okay that's all fine and dandy but <laughs> if we talking about adrenaline uh, uh fatigue if we talk about targeting the adrenal glands if we're talking about targeting stress i wouldn't go to the little sour shop even though sour shop is one of the superfood ones that's one of the gangster ones it really is but i wouldn't go for no sour shop for that so keep an open mind that there are some herbs that are just so good for one certain area better than other ones and so for the one that would help you the most with adrenal fatigue, and we talk about stress here. We talking about we talking about what sits on top of your kidneys and regulates your stress. What helps to detox your kidneys? 
what's going to help to remove mucus out of your body. Y'all ready? Y'all listening? Can y'all hear me? Y'all done got quiet. Ain't nothing moving. <laughs> y'all listen to me? Can I, can, I, can I get a yes? I mean, the screen just looking, just sitting there. Am I still alive? Hello. Okay, I see a heart over there. Okay. Hey, yes, we here. This one here. Licorice root. This herb here, if you are stressed the heck out. <laughs> if you been in flight or fight mode. Hey, tomorrow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for responding, Raz. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are in flight or fight mode, I suggest that you get you some licorice root. If you know darn well that Becky get it on your ass nerve. If you know darn well you in a chaotic environment. If you know that relationship got you stressed the heck out. Even if you don't change environments, don't change relationships, don't change jobs. Get you some of this here. I started using this here on my face, and I'm gonna tell you what happened to me the first day. I'm gonna show you what it looked like. Yes, I wanna show y'all what it looked like. Ooh, this smells strong. Let me back it up. You see that powder coming from it when I jiggle? So I wanna show you what it looked like. It's not nasty. I'm going to drink some licorice and burdock green tea right now. Oh, be right back. <laughs> she about to leave the lives and go drink some. That's funny. This is what it looked like right here. This is what it looked like. Let me tell you. The first time I consumed some licorice root, I'm going to tell you what happened. I drank some, and my gift, let me tell you this here before I begin. This is that kind of strong. <coughs> Excuse me. The first time that I consumed some, my gift is being able to know when something is working for my body and when it is not because I'm in tune with my body I say that it's a gift because I better understand GMOs and I can put them on my tongue and I don't talk about GMOs to you I don't suggest GMOs to you I will never do that because I everything that I suggest to you is because I've sat there and I experienced it and I let my gift tell me yay or nay when we get in tune with ourselves spiritually, we should be able to know what everything we're consuming is doing for our body. So I'll never steer you wrong based upon a being a melanated being and being in tune spiritually to self. This is what knowledge of self, that's one of your other superpowers. Anyway, when I first tried this here herb just by itself, and I only did one teaspoon one tablespoon of it in actually two bottles of oil, water so that's what like a 32 ounces or whatever and I just kept going back and forth and so basically I drank two tea bottles equivalent right and I sweetened it with agave it didn't taste nasty at all it ain't like the bitters but I tell you one thing I sat down because this is what I do whenever I introduce something new to my my diet herbal wise being that i've researched herbs first i research it to see what it you know it's supposed to do then i take it and i sit there with myself and i feel i pay attention to my internal self and i feel whether this is benefiting me or not and i know by the response of my cells because i'm connected to myself myself meaning my cells as well the c e l l s part of me and I sat there and I can literally feel weight almost like release going down my back like it's equivalent to it's equivalent to being in the shower and you turn your back on the shower head that's where you can feel because see right above your kidneys is this is where your adrenal glands are so so releasing that energy right there that inflammation that stress right there i felt the release right it felt really good though it felt like an internal massage like like deeply massaging my back and i'm like oh that feels really good then the next thing you know it's knocking me out 
like the lady was talking about earlier, the ashwagandha, and that's good for stress too. But I don't take any type of medication. So my, in my body, I eat clean too. So when I take herbs, I really feel all the benefits of the herbs. And so next thing I know, I was, I was actually talking to somebody and I was like, the cup was in my hand. I was like, what? What you say? Because it, it was knocking me out. And the person's like, okay, I'm about to go to bed. And so I put the cup down. I couldn't even finish that particular cup. I think that was on like um, the second, um, that was like the third cup. And I couldn't finish the cup. And I went to sleep. So then I woke up the next morning and my nose was stuffed. Now I don't I don't suffer with no sinus issues. I don't normally have no nose strip or nothing like that, like right? And I had a stuffy nose. So as soon as I opened up my eyes, my nose was so stuffy. Now mind you, I I take all kind of herbs. And my nose stuffy. I go to the bathroom and I got some toilet paper to blow my nose. One of them big exhales, like, right? Big blow. And the whole blow was both nostrils of mucus coming out of my nose. And I'm like, well, I'll be there. How did I get this here? I, I, I eat clean. Where did this come from? I'm always doing this one and this one and this one. This particular licorice root helps you with sinus issues if you have sinus issues if you have high blood pressure and if you have cholesterol issues i would recommend you buy you some of this here i just bought this one here this brand if you want to look at it closely i got this one here from amazon actually this one came from amazon so i'm mentioning that in correlation to the stress that we're talking about because this is going to purge those kidneys this is going to relieve stress. This is going to help you sleep well. Now, I will precaution you this he, to this here because if you have heart issues, though, it tells you from what I researched and from what I experienced, and I'm not going on research no more. I'm talking about from what I experienced. My heart, <laughs> my heart did increase the rate because every part as i lie there every part of me now was moving rushing blood rushing mucus rushing stress it was just almost like when before i dozed off to go to sleep that shower that ex example of the shower was equivalent to my blood cycling and i could feel particles and molecules just moving in my body activated now this is part of my gift my gift activates this feeling when i know something is organic when it is cleaning cleaning out my blood aka purging my body right so that let me know that it was beneficial for my body that let me know that it was good but being that my heart was beating i remember i had a bottle of water next to my bed too when i was laying there and i drank some water because it was, it almost gave me that, 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 that rush, so to speak, that maybe the coffee people get that rush, that burst because it was cleaning out my adrenal glands where they normally get their burst of energy to start their day. Mine was being cleaned out and I felt that. And as soon as it began to release, I felt the particles being released into my kidneys. I'm telling you what was happening at a cellular level from this licorice root. And so the first thing in the morning, that mucus was coming out of my nose and I urinated for a long, long, long time because I was releasing. So those of you who are stressed, that's really what I wanted to share with you on this particular live. Get you some licorice root. Get rid of that adrenaline fatigue. Leave that coffee alone, baby. And go to the roots, to the herbs that's for the healing of the nation. And then change that during environment. Because how you feel really matters in the physical reality. If you can't or don't think that you mentally are there just yet, and you know where your mental is at, to, to leave that situation or transform the energy of that situation, do what's in the next order for you to do. Because your environment matters.
how you feel matters. Some people can't stay up in a chaotic, maybe abusive relationship where the man is beating them every other day and be calm enough to meditate and be calm enough to quantum jump into the perfect relationship through the mind. Some people can't do that. Sometimes you got to pack your bags and say enough is enough. I love me more. I love my, my mindset more. I love my body more. I have too much potential to be here. I want better for me. So I must leave this physical environment so I could go somewhere else where it's a little bit more pleasant so I can renew my mind there. If that's what it takes, get your stuff, get the packet and move on. But if you have to stay, do things like this here to alleviate your stress. Do things like this here to, 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 to work on that cortisone level in your body, that, that adrenaline and that mental and, and fatigue. Do things like this here to deliver the, the proper minerals to your body to help your kidneys out. Do things like this here to get rid of that mucus and everything that I, wish I shared with you thus far on this video was about you expelling mucus aka toxicity in your body and all of this whether we're talking about acids whether we're talking about mucus whether we're talking about toxic ingredients whether we're talking about perfume whether we're talking about the the uh formaldehyde and stuff that they put on toilet paper and on animal products whether we talk about the parabens in the soaps and the lies in the soaps or the parabens in the in the, in the shampoo and condition in conditioners, whether we talk about tap toxic water, whether we talk about the toxic air, the air pollution, when we talk about chemtrails, all of this here stuff has to be filtered inside of your body. And what filters this kind of stuff? Your kidneys. <laughs> so not only are we talking about your stresses of your life, but we're talking about the pollutions in your life. The acids that's building up in your life. Get that stuff up out of there. I told you the tips on how to drink the water with it. So you flush it out with your sodium bicarbonates and your electrolytes in your water. And then you make your tea with your licorice root to help you with your adrenaline fatigue. And you get rid of all the animal products. You don't have to do that as many. You don't have to have meat in every bite. You can cut back. I ain't telling you to be or teaching you how to be no vegan. But I am teaching you mindfulness. I am teaching you a health and wellness over here. So cut back a little bit. And when you cut back on that meat a little bit, you introduce a little bit more vegetable on that side of the plate now. When you cut back on, on that, that, that heavy eat meaty, meat eating then you go to some of those fruits that's going to also assist your kidneys like your your key limes make you some key lime aid that's going to also assist your kidneys make you drink you some real coconut from young coconut real coconut water eat you some seeded grapes and there you go now now you have you have unclogged those kidneys and in unclogging them, you helping the cyst to unclog them other arteries. You done incorporated some, some salts that's going to help unclog it because the salts is going to work like a saline, saline solution and loosen that stuff up to be expelled out of your body. So everything that I said on this in life is to breathe life into you. It's to breathe life into you. You have the tool now. Those of you who are stressed out, if you're in your stressful environment, you got the tool. Now you got what to drink. You got the herb of choice to use. You know now the, the salts that you need to be putting in your water. You got your body now in taking more alkaline substances. You know a little bit better now. But here's the thing. Knowing better versus doing better. Are two different people. Two different people. Two different mindsets. We got a lot of people on the tick to the top. They, they just sit there. They just regurgitate information. Yeah. They can tell you everything that they say in the encyclopedia. Huh. They can say, tell you everything that they say, but they're already doing it. The knowledge, being powerful, comes when you implement it. That's when you become powerful. Powerful enough to now, now break that generational curse. Even if you're not a TikToker. Powerful enough now to heal your family. Powerful enough now to get up in that kitchen and alkalize your whole family because you are God in that house. You're creating other gods <laughs> who are going to be, or already are rather, creatures themselves. So what, what side of the spectrum is your gods going to sit on? The alkaline side 
or the ascetic side, experiencing just ease and just harmony. That's always going to be our choice, thought by thought by thought. But in the physical, it's sometimes bite by bite by bite because we're consuming these things in the physical. And we believe it, even, even if, even, let me tell you how, how this ties physically and spiritually together. It is the belief that you have when chewing that tea. So you could believe, well, okay, you could ignore me and say, just like the lady, and I'm not picking on you, I'm just using an example, the lady that said, I love my coffee. That's what she said. She loved her coffee. But here's the test of time for that lady with her mindset. If that coffee is making that lady ascetic, if that lady was on this channel talking about, don't how dare you tell me anything about my coffee. I love my coffee. You talking bull crap and da 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 da. If that lady was one of them kind of ladies, and she's not, one of them kind of ladies. I'd be like, well, okay, well, it's good for you. It's working for you. But if in her physical reality, that coffee is dehydrating her and tearing up her kidneys too, and it's causing her ascetic, that means she don't believe that thing in her mind. Because as a man think it, so is he. <laughs> or another thing, if that lady is picking up on my signal, my thought, my thought of it in other people, reaction, them shaking, and her seeing the frequency of other people and what the coffee is doing to them. If she see them shaking and in her mind, she's like, oh, coffee, coffee might not be good for me either. That goes into her subconscious mind. And so when she drink it, she'd be, she'd be like, yeah, it is good for me. She won't ignore them people shaking. She won't ignore the signals in the thoughts of them other people. But energy is not destroyed. It's just transformed. So those thoughts of what they're going through while she drinking her coffee, manipulates her energy. If she allows it to. See, all of this goes back to mind. So when she drinking her coffee, and she think about that person in the break room who was shaking and addicted to it, and she's drinking her coffee, and she's telling herself, no, my coffee is good. I love my coffee, and my coffee is giving me my magnesium. No, 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 no. All she's doing is fighting with the thoughts. Her thoughts. <laughs> See, this is all thought. This is all consciousness. So if her thoughts is not in alignment with the coffee being good for her, then her coffee is going to destroy her. But if she have a law that's unaffordable in her subconscious mind, that this coffee is giving me life and nobody, no other signal can penetrate through my subconscious mind where I put in my own laws, then that coffee ain't going to harm her. <laughs> See, and that gets to the mindfulness side on this God is just be channel. All is mine. And this is why we have some things and some people thinking they're experiencing like the placebo effect. Because guess what? At the end of the day, we are God creating our own reality. Thought by thought by thought by thought by thought. And it is based upon what your thoughts are and what you believe. <laughs> And what you put inside of here. I want you to know that. I want you to understand that. Because I, wa I want you to understand that not just for yourself. But I want you to understand that for myself too. Because in this, in this physical reality. This illusion right now that we're experiencing. There are some times. Like I'm on a fast now. I'm not eating now. But I tell you one thing. When I do. After these four days are over. Begin to indulge. I told y'all earlier in the video, I come from this, this, this New Orleans place in this matrix, New Orleans, Louisiana. And down there, they have these little che Cheetos, these like Elmer Cheetos. Lord, these Cheetos are so good. And so what I do in my physical reality, Elmer's probably don't have no ingredients of no magnesium and, and chlorophyll up in there. But because I know, and I want you to get to this place one day in your journey too, because I know that all is mine, when I get off this face, I'm getting my Elmer's again because that's my little favorite little Cheetos. That's my little, that's my only little chip that I really, really like in the physical reality. And so when I'm eating them, they, they like, they like orange looking and they have these little green little dots on them. And so I say in my, in my mind that, oh, that's just like turmeric, huh? Even though I'm eating food with turmeric. Oh, that's the same color equivalent to, to turmeric. Oh, and them little green dots, they, they gotta be chlorophyll. 
and magnesium. Yeah, it got to have chlorophyll in it because they're green. I know darn well other people in the physical reality not looking at those Elmer's chips like that. But as a man thinketh, so is he. And nothing shall by any means harm me because I've renewed my mind that my Elmer's, the one that they sent to me, probably not the one they sent to you all, the Debbie Downers that don't have the brain capacity to believe this thing, but the ones that they deliver to me has a plethora of magnesium and chlorophyll. And iron, because I need my iron, because years ago, before I healed my body, I was anemic. And so now I need my iron. My iron sometimes come from my Elmer's chips. And so that's my law. And you out there, when I get my chips, because I got to order them on Amazon since I ain't in New Orleans. They only sell them out there in New Orleans. You, in the physical reality, when I get my chips, might not believe that. But you ain't eating my chip. And you don't have my mind. And you, on physical, might look at me and say, oh, she, I thought she was a little vegan lady and she said, no, eat those chips. Oh, I wonder if those chips have this and that and a turd in there. Well, guess what? It really don't matter because in my mind, those chips have magnesium in there. And I'm not making this here excuse in order to, to I, I feel like we all can eat what we want in the physical reality. Even if I, if that meant I wanted some chitlins or pork or whatever, which I really even wouldn't, I don't want to experience in my physical reality just because I don't want to. But I know that if I desired to change this law that I made in my mind, I could. I could. Because I want you to get to this place. We're on a journey of becoming and remembering who we are. So I don't want you to think for one moment that I'm telling you to be, be no vegan. I'm telling you to be God. I'm telling you to be God all by yourself. But I understand that some of the gods at their lower self and they don't believe in themselves no more. Yeah, because we in this so-called simulated matrix, in this so-called earthly classroom thing. And so we got to remember, we got to join right brain to, and left brain, hemisphere, back together again. We got to get into the union again. You know, the bride and the groom. We got to connect the conscious with the subconscious. And then once they're together, we'll be hooked up to infinite intelligence again, super conscious. See, we got to go through all of these levels of graduation. So I want to tell you at top tier, at top tier level, you can eat what you want. Because all is God and all is mine. But you might not be there just yet at low frequency. So you, you know where you at. And I'm not trying to downplay it with nobody. I'm not trying to say, oh, you a little G kind of God. No, you a powerful ace God. You a whole that exists. You just don't remember is what I'm trying to say here. I'm just here to teach you how to remember. And so in remembering, we just manipulate the energy until we get there. Until we all get there because we're all on a journey trying to get back to the same darn place. We, some of us take the scenic route. We all like the little prodigal son that they talk about in the biblical text, returning back to source. And what happens to source after each lifetime, each experience that we return source just is greater and greater and greater. So that, ha that happens to us as above, so below. And so we get greater and greater in our mindfulness practices and to the point we ain't going to need these herbs no more. Because we've been to that place of, or state of mind be being too. But well, we ain't need the herbs. <laughs> and so it might be strange when you see some of the people with their higher intelligence living off things like the sun. Not eating. Not even drinking water. I just taught you how to manipulate the water in the physical reality. But they have some people are at levels where they don't even drink water. Some of the greatest of the monks, the Buddhist monks, will sit underneath a tree for years. And don't even talk, don't eat, don't do nothing. And so on the outside, the, 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 the ones that don't remember just yet, they'll be around me looking at that monk saying, oh, this must not be real. Let me watch them. Oh, he needs to get his magnesium. He needs his iron. Oh, my God, when is he going to drink some water? How come he's not drinking water and eating his fruit? He's going to surely die. No, because all is mine. <laughs> get that part, too. I love this part of my journey, teaching you what I've learned and what I go through and experience in the physical reality, because I feel like you are my reflections. I feel like I have a lot of value to offer you here, but I do no justice to you or for you or 
speaking, speaking through me to you, if I speak nothing of your soul essence, the part of you, the Lord, the part of you that lives on for eons and eons and eons, and it does not need herb, it does not need water, it does not need anything in the physical. <laughs> because it's pure consciousness. This is what consciousness is really about. <laughs> Mindfulness. Okay. Okay, I just had to tell y'all that. I had to tell y'all that. Okay, let me get back to these comments. Whew. That was beautiful. Let's see. Hi, sister. How are things? Hi. Is that Silfred? I hope I'm saying that right. Everything with me is perfect, babe. My kidneys are struggling right now. Yeah. So if your kidney is struggling right now, some fruit would be seeded grapes. Some drinks you can make is key limes and um, seeded key limes. It's called, a, I call it a limeade. I make it like once a week for my family. We all drink out of a gallon picture of it. So it's key limes. It's your spring water, how I taught you how to manipulate it. And it's going to be sweetened with agave. Sweetened, however much sweetener you want. But you got inside of that, like your prebiotic is your agave. You got your key limes, actually um, alkaline, and they're really good for your kidneys. So you make that kind of lime A. You consume coconut water straight from the coconut. You consume spring, al spring, spring alkalizing water that I just showed you all on this particular live how to make. I'm going to upload this here to my YouTube channel for those of you who maybe missed the beginning. And I say grapes, I say coconut water, I say the um, spring water. And the um, li licorice root is a good, 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 good herb for the kidneys. Don't overdo it, though. You know, like I was saying, just only do like a, a tablespoon when you go to boil it at a time. You know, be easy with yourself to hydrate yourself. Fruit is going to be your go-to for when you're dealing with kidney issues. You want to get rid of that lactic and that uric acid buildup in your kidneys, too. So you might want to consume some unrefined cold press extra virgin coconut oil organic coconut oil and you could consume that at the same time with your licorice root tea by just getting a spoon of the coconut oil in its solid form and you're going to put it in the tea when the tea is hot and it's going to milk there unless you like and i say i'm gangster because unless you gangster like me because i'll just take the spoon and i'll just put it in my mouth and i'll just consume it that way some people like to, you know, eat milled it and they can't take that texture of the coconut oil being in their mouth. But coconut oil is anti-inflammatory, it's antiviral, antifungal, antimicrobial, antiparasitic. So it's going to get rid of any type of, you know, anti, you know, viruses or whatever inside of that. But at the same time, it's going to soothe you. It is the most powerful, in my opinion, go-to source for inflammation. And so... When you or we are in this flight or fight mode, we don't realize how inflamed we really are. And so when you consume it for the first time, it's almost like, and I've watched because I've dealt with a lot of sick people. And I think about my journey when I first consumed it in my mouth for the first time. I've watched, I literally watch people consume it. And then they make this noise like, <sighs> that lets you know that you have been in flight or fight mode. That lets you know that the inside of your body, <laughs> It's been stressed. That lets you know that there was so much inflammation there. So you can't go wrong with that. Coconut oil, if you're having kidney issues, that's going to lubricate them too. And, your, and also coconut oil is um, um, high on the pH range. It's about an 8. So it's alkalizing your water. So you got the coconut uh, oil alkalizing. Um, it's alkalizing your body is what I meant to say. So you got the coconut oil alkalizing your body. Getting rid of inflammation in your body and any kind of parasites and fungus and whatever from the, you know, transforming of the energy of the uh, animal food inside of us. Or not even just animals, you know, because breads, bread and stuff have like um, gluten, glue inside of it. And so it's loosening that. And speaking of loosening, it also busts through the lipid coating of viruses that may be in there and protecting you, themselves inside of the body. 
They protect themselves with this lipid coating. And so you want to consume coconut oil sometimes. You don't never want to cook it. It's a version. You don't want to put heat to no version. No olive oil version or no coconut oil version. So you want to consume this kind of oil here because it'll bust through the lipid coating on viruses and it'll destroy it because it's also antiviral. It's going to bust through the virus. Then it's going to destroy the virus itself. And so coconut oil, licorice root, your spring water, your key lime aid, your seeded grapes, and your coconut water. Those things, you can't go wrong with kidney issues. You, you incorporate those type of things in your diet and stay away from that stress because it's tied to you having a stressful life. Eliminate some of that stress so you can get out of that flight or fight mode. Constantly being there, that's not good for you. We God. Remember in the biblical text, these parables is equivalent to our lifestyle. The parables in the biblical text, how Jesus, the Christ conscious one, that's you. That's who the Bible is all about. It's about you. You'll be coming from atom to when you become the Christ conscious one. In the biblical text, they talked about Jesus going on to the, up to the mount to pray. You know, and the disciples, so to speak, were down there falling asleep and everything. How do you think the environment on top of a mountain was well i live in arizona right now and the frequency of a mountain is very high frequency i was just talking earlier about being out there with the animals in 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 the environment for the animals when they look at you they're not chaotic they're not fight or fight they just look at you like hi hi and they just keep on going about their family business and keep on walking so I'm thinking just layman's terms, putting those parables into text and to apply it to your right now reality, your right now environment. If Jesus fasting and praying and, and meditating on the mouth, you know, when you meditate, you got to take deep breaths from your diaphragm. You know, that's aching to clearing out your lymphatic system. Another thing to clean out your lymphatic system is doing things like rebounding and exercising, right? meditating listen to peaceful music things like that but when we are in fight or fight mode we ain't doing none of them things <laughs> so let's pay attention to your stress level all is mine get your mind there and even if you only can just quantum jump to maybe maybe you being on the mount quantum jump sometime when, we, when you being on the beach right now quantum jump to a state of being where you feel at peace. And when you quantum jump in your mind, since all is mine, since I teach consciousness here too, I teach on every frequency that you possibly can be on. If you quantum jump there, you gotta remember this one thing. In your mind, you gotta be in that body. So if you on the beach, you're not looking at your face. If you in the body on the beach, you gotta be in the body on the beach. And being in the body on the beach, you have to hear that water. You have to hear the waves and the current. You have to smell the environment, those healing microbes in the air. You have to be able to touch that saying. You have to experience that thing. And when you begin to experience that thing by quantum jumping to that thing, this here equates to you releasing that stress this equates to that adrenaline fatigue going away because you just jumped out of this state of being and you say no that state of being instead so you can mentally practice these things to get you less stressful <laughs> okay let me see let's see thank you very much you know what i was thinking about having my own Museum, I've been thinking. Oh, okay. Okay. Shipping. Oh, sipping my water. Sipping my water now. You, you made you some? Wait, I just logged in. Are you saying to drink water? I'm confused. Yeah, you're amazing. Divine feminine, you are too, babe. I know you shop at Whole Foods Market. <laughs> Actually, I, I do sometimes, but not as much as I used to. I like to shop at Asian markets a lot and Trader Joe's. Whole Foods is kind of like whole paycheck. But I used to spend my whole paycheck because this is my passion. And I used to spend my whole paycheck pretty much checking out all of the waters over there, checking out the ingredients and certain things. And then that's so I would do price comparison to save some of my money because I pretty much live this life i don't just come on here just to be live and just tell y'all something that i read this is my a lifestyle for me so i've been on this journey for about 10 years now and so yeah a couple of years and then i worked in corporate america i had well i you know i'm still in abundance lifestyle but you know i had you know at that time constant checks and so 
I just handed over my paycheck, so to speak. <laughs> Even though when it was high, because it got me, they got me with the waters at one point, and then, <laughs> then they got me in a sense with the, you know, the, the grass-fed animals, like right. So I wanted a cleaner animal. Like I didn't want <laughs> the animals that was key stuff or whatever. But I was on a journey, though. I was on a journey, and we go through these type of things. And I feel now, in hindsight, in hindsight is twenty twenty. It's a beautiful thing. I don't regret all of the paychecks that I spent at Whole Foods, so because it was helping me to get in a position that not only was I helping me and my family, but to be in a better position to help you. So now I can help you save your whole check. You, you don't have to go over there and spend your whole check because I can tell you other places where you could go, and I can teach you how to manipulate the energy and, and not even have to go up in there no more. <laughs> Let's see. But yeah, I used to. You're the reason I started using it every day. Perfect. No more soothing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Not more soothing than licorice. Wow, thank you so much, lovely. I was just saying how inflamed my body has been. It's mad at me. Yeah, it's tired of being in flight or um, fight mode. It wants that inflammation to cease. It wants to deliver blood back to the other organs instead of in your arms and in your feet, you know, in your legs, making you strong to fight and whoop somebody butt or leave situations by running, you know, fleeing. We, we wasn't made for that. Not to be in that type of environment always, no. I love you. I love you too, Grateful. Thank you for being here. I'm coming over to, to that side. I'm almost done. Let's see. I missed the spring water hack earlier, but I'll try to find you on YouTube. Okay, perfect. Yeah, do that. I'm going to post this video. Hey, Big T. I'm in class. Hey, hey. I'm going to post this when I get a whole paycheck. Yeah, for real. I was spending my whole paycheck. I couldn't find seeded lime. It's bad. Huh? Is it bad to use unseeded? Well, I don't talk about um, things that are they don't resonate with me like I share with you all I have that gift and like a regular lime a regular lemon without seeds it don't do nothing for me energetically so that's why I don't tell or share GMO stuff with you all especially being that I'm really I am here for all people we are all vibrating at different frequencies and you know love is you know it's amongst us all you all have the innate ability to tap into source energy but being that in this matrix, I came forth as a so-called lady, so-called black woman. And in this matrix, we have a lot of like um, blood work and all in the medical industry that is conducive to like a Caucasian being that is for those beings. I really feel like I want to be that, that voice for the melanated beings that, that are going to that institution. And they are telling, they're being told that they have high blood pressure. They're being told that they have to go through this chemo. And they're being told all of these things based upon how a Caucasian being's body would respond or blood type of a Caucasian being. So I firmly stay with non-GMO things. And I only share with you all non-GMO things. And I ain't talking about unseated things. Because these things, they may work for lower frequency beings. And maybe a, for a short time in deeper rich rooted melanated beans but then then melanated beans be like yeah it was working in the beginning and it didn't stop but if you were using something that was non-gmo it would not stop it will work with your body it will always be beneficial for you so i like to stay consistent with that so back to you not being able to find them actually that's really really strange i don't know what state you're in because i say that's strange because even in walmart now which I don't particularly care for Walmart, Wild World, whatever you call it, because they don't sell healthy choices, in my opinion, and they make a whole lot of money. So I, I don't give them my money because of that, because of that, because I couldn't find Pink Himalaya Sea Salt in none of the Walmarts when I was looking for them, and I, after that I just stopped going. But even the Wally Wally World Walmart, when I did go there, they had key limes. They be sitting next to the regular greens, unseeded key limes, and normally they'll be up in that little uh, bag. I don't know what they call that, but it's like this green bag with little holes, um, kind of like the fences, the little lattice fences. Like they'll have little holes, but they're green, and then they have the little tie wrap at the top. They are the smaller limes, and they have seeds inside of it. They have them there. They have them at the Ross's stores. They have them at the Asian markets. Um, they have them. 
at Trader Joe's. Um, yeah, those are the four places that I could think of that they have seated for lunch. And I would say go maybe to another store. Sometimes, especially in our communities too, and I'm, I'm not trying to be narrow-minded, but I'm trying to open up your mind to the idea of getting out of your environment once again in another way. Sometimes in our communities, you will have a bunch of liquor stores, we'll have a bunch of cake stores, we'll have a bunch of mom and pops, you know, shops where maybe they're selling burgers and all kind of different animals and smoked sausage sandwiches and hot sausage sandwiches. We'll have all of that, but we can't find coconuts. We can't find key lime. So you know what that means? That means we got to get up in a car. And this is what I did. I'm telling you what I did. I got up in my car because it wasn't near me. It wasn't in my city. I had to actually get on the bridge. This is when I first started my journey in New Orleans, Louisiana. The bridge there called the Greater New Orleans Bridge. I would have to cross the Greater New Orleans Bridge, crossing over the Mississippi River, all the way to Veterans Boulevard, just so that I could find it. So sometimes it takes you having to go on a journey. This, this is just, just, just toss the gas money to the fact that really, they saying physical. This just me going on a journey, getting to know me, getting to know the endless rabbit holes that I can create. And so you get up in that car and you go find them key lines. They might not be in your city, but you're going to be able to find them if you get in that car, though. Catch the bus. If you if you really sick or if you really need this here thing, you're going to find a way to get it. Tell that guy that like you, hey, baby, you sure is strong. Oh, I just love you so much. You know what would be juicy? We'll be juicy later on tonight and me and you have a little tea time. Yeah, I was thinking about some lime, eh, baby. Let's why don't you go get pick up some limes from across the river? <laughs> Tell them go get that thing if you tired. <laughs> Manipulate <laughs> Manipulate his energy or that energy too. And tell him, look, we're gonna have some tea time, big daddy. Go get some limes, baby. And I'm gonna drizzle, drizzle some of that lime. <laughs> I'm going to drizzle some of that lime juice on your body, big daddy. Do what you got to do to them and never take that energy too. Let's see. Anyway, um, it's good to drink alkaline water and electrolytes. Yeah. Yeah. What's good water? Any water is good once you learn how to manipulate it. I'm new to your page and I am the coffee lady who's not drinking coffee tomorrow morning. <laughs> Yes, that's beautiful. That is so funny. Drink you some spring water like I taught you. Or find you some um, coconut water. Coconut water will really hydrate you at a cellular level. Yeah. Wait, let me turn this thing on. My battery running low so I can finish these comments. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, is it charging my battery? Yeah. Huh. Okay. All right, so let's see what else we got going on here. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, and we thank you. What a beautiful representation! Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I really want to represent all, but I, I'm gonna stay true to non GMO stuff over here. I'm like, I'm not even about to explore that. And when I hear that, I don't knock people down that do the little GMO things, I just look at them and just keep on going. You know, everybody on a different type of journey. What's your take on? I think you're saying twice time. I think you're saying sour sap. I love sour sap. I use sour sap in my be the tea for the weight loss on my website. I drink sour sap tea sometimes too. I love it. I love the fruit. I get the fruit out here because they have the sour sap fruit at the Asian market. I get the fruit and I make fruit smoothies and I get the leaves. I get the leaves from Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com. I think it's called body and butters. I get the leaves from there. I make sour sap teas. The sour sap is really good for the digestive system. And it helps with the big C, you know, it really cleans you out. But I was talking about licorice root here because in comparison, licorice root is way better for the kidneys than sour sap is. Yeah. So let's see. I love it. How do you manipulate water? Yeah, power, power. We was just talking about um, manipulating water by the things I, I love sour sap. So good for you. It sure is, Pat. So let me go to this here page. We was just talking about manipulating the water by the, um, by the sodium bicarbonates and by the pink Himalayan sea salt that you put in there. That's how you manipulate it. Some people in their mind, this is another thing we back at mindfulness. Another thing, some people with their mind, they can manipulate the water and just give good intentions to the water, saying that they love the water. This is why we, we, we're dealing with physical and spiritual. If you physically at a place where you know that or you don't trust, this is based upon what you think. You look at this, this bottle of water without nothing in it when you bring yours home and you say, 
and you have a thought. And so your thoughts say, girl, if you don't, if you don't put some sodium bicarbonate and some pecan lead sea salt in there, you can't do that by yourself in your mind. That's your thought. That's your belief. Your, you, all you got to do is ask yourself a question. Am I mentally strong enough to do that? And if you doubt yourself, that means in your subconscious mind, you are limiting yourself. So now that means you got to manipulate your water, right? You got to do it because you just, you just ask yourself a question. God never asks himself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to. So if you think something is against you and you drink it, it's got to fulfill the word that you sent out for it to do, right? If you don't think this is alkaline enough, then you got to do these little tactics and these little tricks that I'm teaching you. Manipulate the energy. Ain't nothing wrong with manipulating the energy. You got That's what we, all you do. You manipulate the energy. Thought by thought by thought by thought. Just think the better thought. So if you, if you don't feel like you can do it mentally, manipulate it in the physical to get to the frequency that you want it to be in the, in the, in the um, physical reality. And you're there. Sometimes, sometimes it just take, you get it on a training wheel bike before you learn how to ride again. And that's all we're doing here. We're putting our training wheels on. And then one day, you take the training wheels off and you realize, damn, I could have rode this bike all by myself. Sometimes we just need training wheels. That's all we're doing here today. We're using training wheels. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all, over here. I wasn't, I was ignoring y'all for a minute, but let me go back to the top. <sighs> okay. You welcome. Hi, Queen. Hey, Earth Angel. I said that one. Hey, Ernie. Thank you for being here. Georgia Peach Girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, life. Anyway, life is great. I like the username. The Kabbalah says, all is mine. Yes, it does. That's some good information right there, Royal. Let's see. Royal laughing at me over here. You go deep. <laughs> Yeah, all of us, our rabbit hole all runs really, really deep. Um, you ought to quit. I must have said something funny on that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. I love Chisos, but I've never had your kind send me some. Oh, man, Clinton, let me tell you, from New Orleans? I'm not in New Orleans right now, so I can't go into a store to pick them up. But I'm on a fast, even if I um was in New Orleans until the 29th. But... They're on Amazon, and I'm getting them shipped to me. Matter of fact, I need to put in my order today, so by the time the 29th come, at 12, <laughs> at 12, <laughs> at 12, I can get my Elmer's chips again. And my Elmer's chips, they, they good for me. That's my law. They ain't gonna hurt me. Mm -mm. Yep. Let's see. Can you talk about healing crisis? Hey, Duke. I got confused and grabbed regular limes. Um, they put them in similar bags as the key limes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they are in similar bags. But nonetheless, maybe next time you go. And, oh, and another trick I can share with you all for the limes. You know, you buy the key limes. When you buy them, go to the dollar store and get you one of them little um, ice trays. If you get your little ice tray from the dollar store, you squeeze all your limes and you could put make key lime juice cubes and so you could put them and store them in a freezer like that and that way they're not sitting on the counter going bad even if you don't feel like getting an ice tray you still come home squeeze all of your key limes and maybe even put them in a ziploc bag and that way whenever you want a little piece of lime or some key lime juice or even add key limes in your herbal teas now in your freezer you have some frozen key limes readily available that's a little something too you can do with the key limes yeah oh i like that yeah oh wow the 29th is coming so soon you did that yeah yeah smart yeah that's what i do you know because i got the little manual little uh, juicer and i could put like about seven of the limes and i just press it and in, in the juice just comes up in a cup i got that from amazon too so you could buy you one of them little pressers Put all that up in a Ziploc and you got to worry about key limes when you making your, if you eat salmon, if you, cause you know, you put key lime on that. My boys eat that. That's how I know. Um, when you are making your key lime aid, you know, when you just want some in your herbal tea, all you got to do is open up the freezer and there you go. You got it ready and you got to worry about keep running to the stove. So when you find them, the lady that said that they, she didn't know where they was at. When you do find them, get a lot of them, bring them home, juice them. That way, now you ain't got to go travel for next time you need them. 
and you have them in your freezer. Let's see. The healing crisis. Can you talk about the healing crisis? You talk about the healing crisis for when you um do for when you are detoxing. That's what you mean that that hurts. Heimer's crisis. That's when you are detoxing and you're so toxic. Are you taking too much of that particular herbal detox and everything dying out at one time? And so when everything dying out at one time, you're going to be feeling sick. Like I have a product on my website that's called Quit Bugging Me. If you take too much of it, it's actually designed to hydrate, to dehydrate worms and stuff like right. So you take too much of it, you might get a die off of fat. Because the worms are going to get dehydrated, the parasites are going to become dehydrated and die inside of you. So that's why I often tell people, if you're going to start detoxing, start off slow and get it to your body. And I would recommend you start detoxing with my sustained detox. This is actually it right here. I would recommend you start detoxing with sustained detox first. Because sustained detox is going to open up the pathways. And that way, if you ever use the quick bug in me... This is one here for killing per parasites and stuff. You want to use the stain first to open up the pathways so when you get to detox and we quit bugging me that kills parasites, then you already opened up and so you could expel that, um, you know, that worm or parasite infection via your bowel movement. And keep in mind that when you do have parasites and you do order something like quit bugging me, you need to incorporate the alchemist oil together because this getting rid of large worms that's dying off. But this will get rid of uh, larva and eggs that or secretions that they would expel when they're dying off because they have like life cycles and they want to repopulate kind of like the gnats be up in the kitchen and stuff. Like you think you done killed them all and then two days later there's more and you're like where are they coming from? Well they, they laying eggs they're secreting when you kill them. And so they, they found that could come in, in and while out in your house, the next generation they created. So these two should be together if you have like parasite um, infection or, and you know this because you are already toxic. You probably already have what they call that psoriasis, not, is this a psoriasis, psoriasis, the pink, yeah, the pink little cheeks or whatever. Well, if you look closely microscopically, it's, it's really just like um, little worms and stuff on them people's cheeks. No, it's not the rice. It's the rosacea one. They got so many terms. It's the rosacea one. Well, people have them pink little rosy looking cheeks. Well, that's parasites actually. So anyway, so they're coming out and even the, the eczema that's telling you inside of my body, it's so aesthetic. So it's coming through my next kidney, which is my skin. So it's coming through the acids are coming through my skin. And so now I have eczema and psoriasis on my skin because I'm too ascetic. And so you need stuff like this, these two together to get rid of the parasites. Because if you have parasites, you have a overproduction of mucus up in there and you got a bunch of acids in there. But the parasites, the reason why the mucus is constantly producing is because the parasites are secreting constantly. And so, so those people that have the big protruding bellies and hard bellies and stuff, the root cause, when you go down the rabbit hole, they have some type of parasite that maybe they invited in their body via their mouth because they consumed a bunch of heavy meats and animals with, that carry those parasites, right? So inside of this, this is called the alchemist oil. And the alchemist oil is clove, the world's most powerful antioxidant. And it is also oregano. Together, this here is a pain reducer. It gets rid of mucus in the body as well. It's antifungal, antiparasitic, antimicrobial. You can use this as a inside of your um, water pick for mouth washing and um, oil pulling with coconut oil. You can use this by rubbing it on your chest if you got like bronchitis type issues. You can use this internally and externally. It's organic, unrefined, and it's two of the world's most powerful antivirals. So you can't go wrong with this, including it in Quit Bugging Me if you have the parasite um, issue. But back to um, that die-off effect, it could be overwhelming. And so key limes is really, really good for the die-off effect when you're in a healing crisis. 
Rest is really, really good. You have to give your body a rest because it's really, really deep toxin at a really, really deep level. And even what you put on your skin is really important during that time. You want to keep organic things on your skin. You want to get away from the spraying perfume on your skin. Spray your perfume on your, on your clothes. You want to get away from putting those um, shampoos and conditioners that have all kind of toxic ingredients that's really, you know, agitating your scalp. You want to get away from the soaps because they have a lot of lye inside of it. Lye being the active ingredient in oven cleaner. So you're stripping yourself of minerals on your skin. You want to clean your skin with something that is natural. I make shampoo called um, B Cleanse and Condition. And I make soap called B Nourish. You want simple things with essential oils in it like my soaps. Like that are pH balanced for your skin. That have like shea butters and coconut butters and mango butters. Things like that that are from a natural source real vitamin C and that's included in my so-called be nourished I have one for men and for women but be easy with yourself drink 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 water and coconut water and cut back if you feel that the crisis the healing crisis has become too much for you cut back like meaning skip the next dose until you get your energy back and you could function because some people's healing crisis can get so chaotic where they're throwing up because what happens is these parasites or bacteria and fungus and whatever it's trying to come kind of like come out you're trying to clear it like right and so by clearing it it'll begin to come out of your ear it'll begin to come and secrete through your eye you know through the um hole in your um your tear duct by your eye it'll come out of your nose so you have an overflow of mucus coming out you know it'll come out by cough it'll come out by diarrhea so It'll come out your urine too. You have bubbles in your urine. You have sediments, a lot of sediments in your urine. It'll come out through your scalp because you be, it's white. If you pay attention to dandruff, dandruff is, is white. That's acids that's coming out of your scalp. That's acids that's letting you know I am clogged up right up in here. In this particular area, my lymphatic system, because the lymphatic system runs throughout the whole body, my lymphatic system is not releasing in this particular area, in this particular area. And so, in, because of that, I get dandruff i need my citrus fruit to get rid of that that acid that build up i need to take care of my lymphatic system which is the back up to my blood they go and tell you about blood work in medical industry in the hospital but you, your blood could be clear and you sitting up there saying i don't know but something still don't feel right yeah you're right because your lymphatic system is doing its job by cleaning your blood but your lymphatic system is clogged up I did this video to teach you how to unclog that lymphatic system, the, uh, the adrenals, the kidneys, all of that lymph goes to the kidneys and it has to be expelled out of your body via the urine. <laughs> I know there's a lot of information, but I wanted to get that out. So yeah, that's what happens during a healing crisis. Yes. When you, when you detox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what is the active ingredient for the detox? Um, in here, sarsaparilla. Because I actually created this is this is when you're talking about unsustained detox. Sarsaparilla is included in this particular detox here because I actually used to be anemic and I actually created this here for me when I was anemic, when I wore glasses, when I had irritable bowel syndrome, when I had vertigo, when I had all kind of stomach ailment and skin issues and all that so i was a real bad anemic so sarsaparilla is really one of the root um bitters in in this particular um detox but they have six bitters inside here it's not just sarsaparilla there's six others in there and so i chose the bitters because the bitter the better and that's just not just a little cute little saying it really is the bitter the better because the bitters is going to take care of that liver and the kidneys the bitters is going to kind of like be like a burst of energy going in that way kind of like how if you consume it in your mouth it's bitter it's nasty to you and so let's just think about that in layman's terms so if it's uncomfortable environment for the parasite then it's going to run off. It's going to try to run off and be expelled. Think about it that way. The bitters clear the blood. And anytime you're dealing with blood, you you you, under, you should understand that the lymphatic system is going to clean too because the lymphatic is the backup for the blood. 
So the bitters is where you go when you have liver issues, when you have kidney issues, that pancreas issue. You know, the bitters is getting to the organs is what I'm saying. And so six bitters are in sustained detox. And so they clean you at a cellular level because they're cleaning your cells of your body. You know, the cells of your body, they secrete waste too. So if you are on here and you actually like work out, even if you don't work out, if you just do like this here to your arm right now, as above, so below, as within, so without. So you are moving your arm, but inside you have cells that are moving, right? So we create, right now I'm creating cellular waste. I just created cellular waste. Cellular waste has to be expelled out of the body too. So this is why it's so important to clean our body at a cellular level to clean out cellular waste. Because if we keep cellular waste in our body, it turns into acids. It turns into lactic acid buildup and uric acid buildup. It turns into waste in our body. And we really end up being full of crap. And so... Sustained detox helps to clean you at a cellular level. So all fecal matter, cellular waste, it becomes, it comes out of you via your bowel and your urine. Because the same detox is going to get rid of all fecal matter in your gut. And when you get rid of the gut fecal matter, it's going to come out through bowel. It doesn't give you like a diarrhea effect. It gives you more kind of like bulk of bowel movement, you know, kind of like the bowel movement that you have after you um, sit on the toilet and you say, um, oh, I feel like I lost 20 pounds. Kind of that bulky old fecal matter that was on the walls of your intestines coming out and you will actually feel it. I'm into my body, so I feel it kind of gathering up things when I, you know, when I used to take it right now, I don't, I still feel it working, but it's not as pulling on my body because my body has been rid in my gut and in my cellular level of old waste, you know, but if you never did a detox is what I'm saying. And it's your first detox, you will feel it pulling. So drink your key lime, drink your um, spring water, drink your coconut water while you're on detox even if you're not on mine i would suggest you drink those type of things because you need to assist your body while your body is detoxing you need to reward your body when it comes off of its fast every night we go on a fast when we wake up that's why we call it breakfast we're breaking a fast you need to reward your body when you come off your face with fruit not with morning coffee so reward your body with fruit juices and with water to hydrate it and give it the electrolytes because it was working. When you run, you give yourself water because you're out of breath. When you sleep in detox, you should reward your body with water, with substance and minerals because it did a job well done saving your life. And often than not, in the weary hours of night, most of our bodies are deficient and robbing Peter to pay Paul and we get up in the middle of the night. That's why that fever kicks in so heavily in the middle of the night. And they get everybody, you know, if you're sick, you become sicker in the middle of the night because that's detox time. And your body sometimes don't have the magnesium that it needs or the electrolytes or the minerals or whatever it's missing that it needs. And it's sending you a signal that all oh, hell is breaking loose up in here because I'm trying to detox and you ain't doing me right. Do your right, body right, babe. Let's see, I never detoxed before, so where do I start? Starting a, a start of a detox would definitely be sustained detox. Starting would be sustained detox, not any other detox because it'll be too much for you. It'll be too much. So yeah, wait a minute, my phone dying. I gotta plug this up before it cut off. One second. it on okay yes okay i was about to die on that page okay can we do licorice root with high blood pressure yeah yeah definitely just 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 make sure that when you start on it it was it was about the ones that had the heart issue but when you start on it start small doses micro dose it start off with like a half a teaspoon and high
Hydrate yourself with some water, with the spring water, alkalizing water. Microdose. Do only one cup. Yeah, because it's 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 really it's really detoxing you, and and you are, you are the type that really really need it. You know, I would say I'm talking about people that have blood, I mean heart issues that maybe have like pacemakers or whatever. Those people, I wouldn't suggest those people. I would suggest that they choose another herb that'll be more beneficial for them. But just heart people, I wouldn't suggest that they fool with it with pacemakers and all of that. Yeah. So um, I never. Detox before, so where do I start? Starting with sustained detox. Yeah, sustained detox. That's a, a, a good start. It's for 30 days. You you only, and when you get these, these are bitters. I did a video on how you could go to like a sprout store and get you, or to Amazon if you don't feel like going to no store, or to Amazon and you buy you some empty gel capsules. You get about 100 of them and they're only like $6. This is a powder form, so you could take this here powder form and you put your um, powder, I mean, put your, yeah, put your powder in the empty gel capsule and digest it like a pill, like, right, for your 30 days. So if it's in a pill form, you're only taking like two or three of these a day. And you, and you could do it morning and night. And then now it's passing your mouth and you ain't got to be talking about how nasty and you could keep going and just pop your little gel cap pill and, and go on about your day. Or you could put it in citrus type drinks, but... It depends upon your mouth tolerance of bitters. They're very bitter herbs. I've got to tell you that. But the bitter, the better, though. They're very bitter. I would suggest that you don't put it in your whole cup of whatever. You put a little bit of your citrus juice or your little bit of your smoothie or your little bit of whatever you're trying to get a past the um, taste of and down and gulp that as fast as you can. Don't do more than like two ounces <laughs> because... You don't want that lingering in your mouth and having to swallow it. It's very bitter. The best approach would be going on Amazon, getting you some empty gel capsules, swallowing it, letting that thing be over with. Easier, the better. Okay? Okay, that's good information. Yeah. How often should we detox? At least every six months to a year. After no more than a year of waiting on that. Depending upon your diet, though. But, yeah, just like car changes, you know, oil changes and stuff. We got to do that with our body. Yeah, so let me see. I'm about to wrap this up. I'm gonna read the rest of these little comments here and I'm gonna get up out of here. Dang, I had a minute to go up here. Uh, <laughs> somebody said better out than in. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Um, so do they only come through the bowel movement? Yeah, I talked about that. Yeah, it comes through like any opening, it could come through. Um, I'm gonna do the cues for my daughter. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right, I got them. Let me look at this here. This includes the questions of clean poultry. Oh, poultry, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember talking about that, but um, but yeah, it should be clean, you know. But who's who's really monitoring that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh no, I love that. I'm just hoping it doesn't. <laughs> yeah yeah but but that's really when you're really 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 toxic like and you would know that you would know that because you probably be the one of the ones that have it already coming out openings openings of your skin like with the rosacea thing you know you would know that because your booty your booty sitting down right now be itching right now you know that because that's a little worm up in there a little parasite right there you know people that's really really toxic they know you know whatever state you're in. Just like with mindfulness, you know if you're mentally strong enough to say to your water, hey, water, you gonna, you're not going to be tap water. You're going to be spring water. You're going to have the minerals, and I'm going to drink you as is, water. I love you, water. You know, even though that works, but it works for the people whose mind there. So you know what your mind at. Everybody know where their mind at. So they probably know where their body at, too. <laughs> Just like the people that have, they, when they finally told that they have cancer or have this and that and the third, they knew, they knew something was wrong already. Because you God in your physical reality, like, you know everything about your reality. You creating everything in your reality. Thought by thought by thought by thought. That wasn't the first time that they thought that thing. So, it manifested. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, who made that? Okay, I read that one. Let's see. Hello, goddess. 
big and full. Okay, oh my God, what do we eat on a detox? Or what do I do in detox crisis? To eat on a detox, you would eat light. You're not eating po 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 boys. You're not eating starchy foods like your breads and your, your you know your cornbread, your pastas. Those things turn into mucus when dissolved inside of you. You want to eat lighter things. You want to drink your smoothies. You want to eat a lot of your fruits. You want to eat your grapes. You want to eat your cantaloupes. You want to eat your melons, like your watermelons. You want to eat. Um, Drink cucumber water. Cucumbers are so hydrated. You want to eat cherries. Cherries are mega antioxidants. You want to incorporate hemp seeds. Hemp seeds have a lot of magnesium inside of it. You pour hemp seeds on top of your salads. You don't want to have salad dressings. You want to make your dressings. You can make a simple salad dressing with like agave, coconut water, and some coconut vinegar. You mix them together. Put some little shake um, 21 season salute or some um, pink Himalaya sea salt for flavor. Shake that little thing up in a little container. Pour that on top of your salad. You could saute your onions and your mushrooms and your colored peppers and your cilantro on top of your green leafy vegetables. You could put an avocado up in there, some sliced tomatoes up in there. Be creative with it, but make sure your food that you are eating has life in it. You want to pull away from all of the dead foods, like the AKA dead animals and all of that, and the heavy breads and pastas and your white sugar and your white salt and go over there toward the life. Salads, smoothies, melons, nuts, seeds, your walnut. Walnut is a good brain food. It look like a little brain with the right and left hemisphere. Walnuts, you got your pine nuts, you got your hemp seeds. Chew on those type things for snacks. Eat real fruit. Fall in love with fruit again. Fruit is life. If you from religion, that's supposed to be your food anyway. In the book, of, I think it's in Leviticus, whatever, talking about the clean and unclean things. I understand Leviticus is part of the old contract, the conscious mind. But we're talking about physical and conscious things. We get roll in the so-called Christ in the conscious way or the physical way of doing it. Once you master that part of yourself, then you move over to so, so, um, the subconscious mind where all is God, where you could just bless your food, where nothing shall nobody mean any, any harm you in any way because now you know who you are. Now you're mental. Now it's all conscious living. Now you're healed because you spoke the word. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta, well, we gotta throw it somewhere, though. Yep. So, anyway, is that it? Great info. Um, what about baby? She street always stopped up running her nose. Baby street. Yeah, babies normally are full of mucus, especially the babies that's eating, you know, that's canned milk, you know, that, that infant milk stuff, cow milk and stuff. You know, they, um, probably, you know, snacking, you know, getting treats and mucus and stuff. Uh, babies, if if it were me, I would, with all the knowledge I know now, you know how I tell you 20, 20, I'll breastfeed my baby, I'll keep the placenta on my baby, I'll bring my baby up in a loving environment, mother and father, no fussing and all that, making sure my baby is not in, you know, adrenaline spiking with fatigue and in flight or fight mode because they hear and feel what I'm feeling and he, they hear she is like a sponge soaking up all things. From my experience, I will understand that now and I'll make sure that that environment is good for them. I will make sure that they are nourished by my breast milk because the breast milk is going to help them with their brain development. That um, DHA that's in that milk for the babies, the synthetic kind on the shelf is nothing to match the kind that comes from a, a mother with the breast milk, you know. Because if you look at a, a non-breastfed baby and one that, is babe, that has been breastfed, that non-breastfed baby, and the head just a wobbling, and you know, they're slower, but that breastfed baby is more alert, they have the less of that mucus, and we'll blame these things on, oh, it's because of the nursery, no, it's because of that cow pus, let's call things what it is in the physical now, because they're coated already with the frequency, cow pus, and you know, white milk, infamil milk, so I would give my baby real fruit. I will give my baby dr fruit drinks all the time. Like if you go to Trader Joe's, if you can't make it yourself out of real mangoes, they have a 100% pure mango juice up in there. I will give my baby um, coconut water. You know, I will start my baby's body or baby's kidneys having the ability to filter because 
I would know that the baby picked up on my ability to filter my body or not. So really what we do as gods when we recreate other gods is create another god in the likeness of ourself. And so when creating the likeness of myself, if I know that myself was clogged up, I would do everything in my ability to give these things to my baby at a lower level. So I would give my baby these fruit, 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 fruit. I would have a fruit baby. I would have a fruit baby because you can't, you, you you know, the herbs are too bitter and stuff for the baby. But guess what? That baby will get its electrolytes and its amino acids from some coconut oil because I will make sure that that baby, if I gave that baby something warm, it'll have coconut oil drizzled on it. So that coconut oil will take care of that baby information. If my baby have, um, have any type of sickness or disease in his body, that coconut oil could help it. If that baby has any type of mucus, I'll be giving my baby some kind of little key lime A juices. It won't be as pungent as my key lime A, but my baby benefiting off of that agave. It's prebiotic in my baby. My baby benefiting off of that key lime because that's helping my baby kidneys too. My baby benefiting off of me giving it slices of watermelon and cantaloupe. My baby will be a fruit baby. Every fruit, every exotic seeded fruit, seeded, not no unseeded. All of the seeded fruit that I see out there, my baby would know how to taste it and experience it. Kiwis, I would just make kiwi in frozen fruit lollipops, whatever I got to do. I will freeze that stuff if it's going bad too fast and I'll freeze it in little balls. I'll give me some little ice cube balls or whatever and stick it on one of them ring pops and have my baby sucking on that. My baby will be the healthiest baby in the physical reality from the things that I know. I will be creative with that thing. And so I would suggest for you, it ain't my baby, but I have love for your baby. And so I would suggest for you as a mother, all that giving my baby a snack stuff, I would nip that in the bud and I'll get rid of all of the crackheads that's on crack, aka sugar. I will keep the crackheads from around my baby. So that they wouldn't try to manipulate my baby with me, having me with a sugar crackhead baby. My baby would be a fruit baby. My baby would have good skin. My baby wouldn't be on no period at 8, 9, 10 years old because it's toxic. My, my, my baby period ain't going to be coming early because she's so toxic that her body has to secrete through this blood to get some of this toxicity out of there. My baby wouldn't be walking around with no acid coming out her face, AKA acne, because she'll be a fruit baby. My baby will be a glowing little jazzy little Bridget walking around here looking like God itself. But that's my baby. <laughs> Even the things that I put, I make products. My baby be wearing all my products, my soap, my lotion. My baby wouldn't be trying nothing commercial. I tell you that. If I had a baby right now, but I ain't about to have no baby. But I can help you with information about your baby. <laughs> okay. All right. So after 30 days, what's next? That's a lifestyle change. Good information. My daughter's 15 year old, very bad hair dandruff and eczema. Yeah. And your daughter is aesthetic. And all, and it's not, nothing wrong or bad. Everybody in a state, in one state of being is very aesthetic. But your daughter needs to come to the alkaline side. Because that's that's just that's just acid. That that white stuff coming out your head, that's just acids up in here. So your daughter needs some key limes, your daughter needs that coconut oil, your daughter needs more fruit, your daughter needs to balance that diet. So after your 30 days, don't just go back and just do the same old thing. That's that's insanity. Start a lifestyle. Don't let's not call this no diet. Let's just call this, hey, I, I just have a different lifestyle now. Hey, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I behaved like a child, but when I became, I put away those childish things. You know, give your body what it needs. Fall in love with your body. Fall in love with the food that you are putting in your body. Fall in love with you at a cellular level. That's it. And so that's a beautiful place of um, time to start at 15. Because at 15, you could get up in that kitchen and you and your daughter could start to learn how to make little healthy meals. Colorful meals. When I first started on my journey with my children, they were younger. So when we were in the kitchen, I was like, hey, let's let's go make something colorful. You know, you're black. This is how I talk to them. I'm being ugly toward people that don't look like me. But I'm like, you're black. You need things that are of color because my bo it was boys that I have. And so I would tell them, you want to be a superhero? You want to activate your superpowers? 
Well, the only way you activate your superpowers is if you have things that are colorful like you. And so if you have anything that's not, that don't have no color on your plate, that's going to take away from your superpowers. Don't you want to be strong? Well, then you need this green, you need this yellow, you need this red, you need this orange. That's your color. Don't tell nobody I told you because then you're going to give away your superpower. <laughs> and so that was just a thing that I told my boys. And we got up in there and we sauteed onions and, and all color peppers. And, and we made all kind of vegan food and we just made it fun. And it was teaching them at the same time about things like silica, the cousin of carbon that melanated people need. And you find that inside of all color peppers. And it's coincidental that if you study spirituality and you think about all color peppers, you're dealing with chakra pools of energy and they correlate with those colors. So you got the green pepper for the heart. You got the orange pepper that's like sacral chakra. You got the red pepper that's root chakra. You got the yellow pepper that's solar plex. So it, it just becomes so fun at the same time, informative, and, and you teach it and you break it in a generational cycle. However, which way you do it, be creative. Just do it though. Hey, you. Hey, free spirit. Thank you for being here. All right. I'm about to wrap this up. Let me see. There are so many nuggets of wisdom here. I love you. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Oh, thank you, Mika. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got me running my mouth today. I'm, tr I'm about to wrap up. It says 16 more messages. I'm going to get through that. And then I'm, <sighs> then I'm getting out of here. Uh, comes out through pers perspiration too. Yeah, yeah. When you're sweating, when you're sweating, you um, releasing toxins too. Yeah, I love your deliverance. Me too. I'm her. Mm -hmm. How long should a beginner do a detox for? I believe the detoxes, if they're under 30 days, they ain't really detoxing because you got to get to deep, deeply rooted things like old cellular waste, old fecal matter. So those little instant manifestation type detoxes that they be having out there like drink this drink and you're gonna no you ain't doing nothing you ain't even get to the pretty much the surface level of it yet you just probably just got the stuff that was right there about to come out anyway <laughs> so yeah I, I believe 30 days that's why mine is a 30 day detox 30 days or more and sometimes you know when they first buy the my detox they'll circle back and get another one you know because they felt so good and they felt so cleansed. And so they just you know, want to go for another round and do 60 days with mine. And then after that, it's like you only need it like once every six months to a year then. Because now you got really, you know, in there at a cellular level. <sighs> I appreciate you so much. Hey, Keisha. Yes, treasure. My first time here and will return definitely. Yeah, I gave a lot of information on this one. I don't know how to pronounce your name over here. Oh, oh gun. Oh, oh, I'm gonna say OG. How about that? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, some of the questions you answered in the other responses. For, sorry for the repeat. Okay, no, no problem. Um, what about the use of turpentine? What about the use of it for what? Twice, twice time is what you're using it for. Oh, okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, uh, running nose all the time. She's three. She has a lot of mucus build up in her body. That's why, um, like I said, the key lines, the water, the um, even oil, even oils too. Dilute them real, real good. But um, like the eucalyptus oil is really, really good as well. Um, you know, even like having it in her room, like the little diffusers that kind of like help her breathe. Yeah. Say the salad dressing again, how to make the salad dressing. I said um, agave, coconut oil, and um, coconut vinegar. And you could put like seasons. I like 21 seasons salute and pink Himalaya sea salt in that same container. Shake it up. Bam. That's a real juicy and delicious salad dressing. Oh, my mouth just watered, y'all. Y'all know I'm on the face. My mouth just watered because that's the first salad dressing that I'm going to make. On the 29th, when I drink, when I eat my first salad, because I can't wait to eat a salad, because I'm on a fruit fast right now, and I really want my salads again. I miss my salads. But yeah, throughout all that pale stuff, yeah, oh gee, yeah, throughout this pale stuff, because the pale stuff is encouraging more mucus, you know, it's mucus forming, like the, unfortunately, like the, you know, the pastas and the breads and, you know, melons and seeds and only, right, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but you got to think about it. Some of those international markets be sip, shipping from other places where it is in season in that place. So, but yeah, the ones that are in season for where you are, that you're growing. Yeah, definitely. But all seeded melons are really, really, really good. And they clean out the digestive system really well. I love, I could eat me a whole watermelon for the day. And that'll be my my food right there. Because I got all my minerals. I got my, my hydration from a watermelon. And I swallow the seeds because, um... The seeds is life too. I don't take my take my time spitting them out. I swallow the seeds. I put the watermelon in my mouth, close my mouth, and I'm ready to swallow watermelons, cantaloupes, you know, honeydew melon. I love me some honeydew melon. Yeah, and what I sometimes I I put it in my freeze. I got honeydew melon and cantaloupe up in my freezer right now, and I just take the little ice cube of it and just even for the babies, you know, make the cubes of ice with it and just suck on it sometimes. Oh, I love that. Thank you for loving my baby. God bless you. Yeah, I love your baby. Your baby is me. It vibrating at a different frequency. Miss uh, Ladungia. Ladungia? I think I said that right. So it's true, though. And they'll teach their babies. Yeah. One, yeah. Each one teach one. And that's how we write those so-called wrongs, which we never really get it wrong. But we just we just increase in our frequency. We remember who, our, who we are. Yes, got all of that color magic and healing going on. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of healing going on there. I pretty much uh, detox the first year of the COVID. Yeah, confessions. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And you're also welcome. Yeah, that was a perfect time to detox during COVID. And that was a perfect time for detoxing or you to be in flight or fight mode because they were sending out all kind of scare tactics. You know, go get the shot go do this then you had to work and then you was worried about the uncertainty of you know the mark the stock market and you know interest rates and losing your home and you know people losing their jobs and all kind of things was going on he everybody probably had a little adrenaline fatigue over there at that time the um the licorice i can't even say it uh root is really good licorice root is really good was would have been really good during that time as well you know okay i'm gonna be on your heels okay 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 anyway i finally caught up i finally caught up with all of the comments and everything that i wanted to present i read everything on my um bullet points of notes that i had here and i'm thankful for every last one of you that came through on both of my pages on god is just be and god is just be healthy i appreciate your support I appreciate you being here. I need to set up a consultation. Yes, you can on my website at www.sortoftheearthpub.org. I do personal consultations about spirituality, about um, mentalism, about quantum jumping, instant manifestation, sickness and wellness, trauma, healing your chakra pools, energy, and so much more. Hey, Madam, you are so welcome. Please let us know your schedule. Uh, as far as my lives, I don't have a particular schedule. I come when I um, am led to do so. As far as my consultations, when you do a booking, you can see my calendar and available dates during the booking. And you pick the booking that works best for you. And then I call you um, on that uh, scheduled time because that is showing you only when I'm free there. This video was from my heart to yours. Remember that you are God creating your own reality you thought it would be a beautiful thing to come forth forgetting who you are on a journey to remembering who you always have been